Alaska, the frigid northern extremity of America. Come April, the harsh winter begins to loosen its grip on the land. The seemingly endless nights grow shorter, day by day, and the frozen wilderness starts to thaw. In the heart of this majestic setting lies a small town not far from Fairbanks, whose weary inhabitants eagerly await the arrival of spring. Montgomery Memorial Hospital watches over the town like an old man. And in this remote hospital toil two doctors who are about to be swallowed by the jaws of fate. We will now begin the tutorial. I will explain the basic treatment of affected areas. There are three topics, incisions, suturing, and bandaging. This patient is a mannequin, but please perform the treatment as if it were a human patient. Now, let's begin the first topic, the incision. First, we will use the antibiotic gel to disinfect the area where we will make the incision. This gel is a multi-purpose salve that is used for disinfecting, clotting blood, and treating wounds. Please select the antibiotic gel now. Do you see the yellow guideline where the incision will be made? The sections disinfected by the antibiotic gel will turn from yellow to blue. Try and disinfect the guideline until it turns completely blue. Hold the A button and move the pointer to apply the antibiotic gel. We are now done disinfecting it. Next, we will use the scalpel to make an incision. Now, please select the scalpel. Move the pointer to the end of the guideline and press the A button. Hold the A button and move the pointer along the guideline. That is how to make an incision. Now, let's try it again. First, you must disinfect the area. Make the yellow guideline turn completely blue. Now, let's make the incision. The incision has been made. Before we move to suturing, let's try making another incision. This brings the incision tutorial to an end. Next is the suturing tutorial. Now, let's begin suturing. The tools used to suture a wound are a needle and thread. Please select the sutures. Large incisions are closed by stitching them shut with the needle and thread. Hold the A button and make a large zigzag pattern with the pointer following the incision. This is the procedure to follow when suturing a wound. As you just saw, the needle and thread are used to suture open wounds. Now, let's try it again. You've successfully sutured the incision. Hold the A button and move the pointer in a zigzag pattern. The same procedure is used to close large lacerations as well as to close up the initial incision. Now, let's try it again one more time. That's the end of the suturing tutorial. Bandaging is next. This is the last part of the tutorial. Bandaging is a treatment done at the end of almost every operation. First, let's disinfect the sutured area with the antibiotic gel. This also stops the bleeding at the edge. Please select the antibiotic gel. Apply the antibiotic gel to the sutured area to treat the hemorrhaging. The sutured area has been disinfected. Now, pick up the bandage tape. The bandage is on the left side of the screen. Move the pointer over it and press the A button. Move the pointer to one end of the sutured area and hold down the A button. Then, move the pointer to the other end of the sutures and release the A button. Don't make the bandage too long or too short. Also, be careful of the angle you apply the bandage at. This is how you tape sutured incisions. This is the step you will use to finish an operation. Master it. Now, let's try it again. First, treat the hemorrhaging along the sutured area. The sutured area has been treated. Now, pick up the bandage and bandage up the sutured area. This is the last time. Let's try it without any hints. Bandaging complete. 
Well then, let's review. Perform the incision, suturing, and bandaging treatments that we practiced. You've made the incision. Now to suture it. Suturing complete. Finally, bandage the incision. All the basic actions have been completed. Great work! That's the end of the tutorial. Welcome to the tutorial! This time, I'll show you something similar to an actual operation and explain the uses of certain tools. The tools that I will be explaining are the syringe, sutures, and forceps. First, select the syringe. The syringe is a tool used to inject different medicines. Right now, there are inflammations in view. Let's try injecting these inflammations with an anti-inflammatory. The anti-inflammatory is the blue bottle at the bottom of the screen. Move the pointer over to the bottle with the blue medicine in it and press the A button. Hold the A button to fill the syringe with medicine. Now move the pointer to an inflammation and press the A button. The inflammation has been treated. Please treat the other inflammations in the same way. All the inflammations have been treated. That is how you inject medicine. Lacerations have occurred in the operating area. Let's treat these lacerations next. To treat the lacerations, use the sutures. Now select the sutures. Hold down the A button and move the pointer in a zigzag motion along the length of the laceration. Once you've sutured from one end of the laceration to the other, let go of the A button. The laceration has been sutured. Please treat the other lacerations in the same way. All the lacerations have been sutured. Just like closing an incision, a laceration is closed by using a zigzag motion along the wound. Let's continue and perform a treatment to remove shards of glass from a patient's body. To remove foreign objects from the area, use the forceps. Now select the forceps. Move the pointer over the glass shard and press both the A and B buttons at the same time. Keep holding both buttons and pull the shard out in the opposite direction than it is lodged in. Now carry it over to the tray and release both buttons. The glass shard has been extracted. Now remove all the other shards using the same method. All the glass shards have been extracted. But now there are wounds left behind from where the glass had entered the body. Use the antibiotic gel to treat small wounds like these. Now treat one of the small wounds with the antibiotic gel. The wounds have been treated. Let's practice what we've covered here once more. The inflammations have been treated. Now, move on to the other areas. The glass shards have been removed. Don't forget to treat the wounds with the antibiotic gel. The wounds have been treated. Please move on to the other areas. The lacerations have been sutured. All wounds have been treated. Great work! That brings this tutorial to a close. They're here! Hurry, Val! The patient's a 40-year-old male. He has a gash on his chest and he's losing blood fast. How was he injured? He ignored the tour guide's warning and picked a fight with a grizzly. His blood pressure's 70, his heart rate's 130, and he's lost consciousness. Got it. Can you hear me? We're going to take you into the hospital. My name is Valerie Blaylock. I'll be treating you. Don't worry. You've been badly injured, but it's not hopeless. In fact, you're quite lucky that there are two skilled doctors in a remote place like this. I've confirmed the patient's blood type and blood count, Dr. Vaughn. Do we have enough blood on hand? If not, then make arrangements. Have Eric make a quick trip to the blood center. Now what about the x-rays? It looks like he has two broken bones. We'll have to rebuild them. Nurse, have an ample supply of antibiotic gel ready. It's hard to believe that situations like this don't seem to phase me anymore. 
And here I thought I was going to be able to kick back and enjoy the northern lights every night. Oh, quit your whining. Doctor, the patient's vitals are dropping. All right, let's get down to business. I have dinner reservations. Let's begin the conference. The patient has suffered a large laceration extending from his right shoulder to his chest. He also has a compound fracture in his right arm. The bone fragments seem to be aggravating the surrounding tissue. There are two objectives in this operation. The first is to stop the bleeding and suture the wound. The second is to retrieve the bone fragments, reform them, and set them in place. The blood won't be arriving for a while. We don't have time to wait. We have to begin the procedure immediately. I agree. Time is of the essence. Let's get started. Okay, let's begin the operation. The patient's vitals are low. Please use the syringe to stabilize them. Please inject more. We need to get his vitals up. His vitals have been stabilized. Begin treating the external wound. First, you'll need to sew up the laceration with the sutures. Begin suturing the remaining lacerations. So far, so good. The suturing is complete, but there are still some small wounds left. Please treat them with antibiotic gel. That takes care of the external wounds. Let's move on to treating his arm. Apply the antibiotic gel to the incision guideline to disinfect the area. The area has been disinfected. Now, make an incision with the scalpel. Begin treating the fracture. First, retrieve all the bone fragments. Use the forceps to remove the fragments that are lodged in the tissue. Place the fragments on the tray. The first fragment has been removed. Don't forget to treat the wound. The third fragment has been removed. Please treat the wound as well. All of the bone fragments have been removed. Please treat the remaining wounds now. Looks like this bone is warped. Let's see if we can reshape it with the forceps. Now we need to reconnect the bone fragments. Twist your wrist to maneuver the fragment into the correct position. You've successfully placed the first bone fragment. Please continue. This is like a jigsaw puzzle. All of the bone fragments have been properly placed. Now, please use the antibiotic gel to affix them. That does it. Let's close them up. Now suture it in the same manner as the laceration. Okay, we need to bandage the sutured incision. Use the antibiotic gel to stop the bleeding before we bandage him up. The bleeding stopped. Hand me the bandage. Apply the bandage from one end of the sutured incision to the other and we'll be finished. Good work, everyone. Good work, Doctor. Now, I don't know how you can remain so calm during an operation. I'll transfer the patient to room three. He'll need to remain here for about five days. Should I send a bill for a guided tour of Montgomery Memorial to his travel agent? Good idea, but don't serve him anything fancy. We don't want him getting too comfortable. I see that the operation went well. It did. So when are they going to give us the key to the city? We are making Alaska safe for tourists, after all. I'll take it from here. That is, if you don't mind stepping aside for an old-timer like me. No, not at all. Just let me know if anything comes up. I'll be at Lucky's, enjoying some grilled salmon. Well, I don't let my stomach call the shots, so I'd be happy to stay a little longer, sir. That's quite all right, Dr. Blaylock. There's nothing more we can do for him for the time being.
beginning the tutorial. This time, I will explain the use of the laser, the ultrasound, and the drain. First, select the drain. The drain is a tool used to clear away liquids, such as blood or pus, from the area of operations. Let's try draining the red pools of blood here. Move the pointer to the pool of blood and hold the A button. If you move the pointer while holding the button, you will be able to drain from a wider area. All the blood pools have been treated. These small tumors were hidden under the blood. The laser is used to burn away small tumors like these. Now, select the laser. This is used in a similar way as the drain. Move the pointer over a small tumor and hold the A button. All the small tumors have been treated. However, after burning away the tumors, small wounds are left behind from the laser. These small wounds can be treated with the antibiotic gel. Please treat all the small wounds using the antibiotic gel. The area is now clear. However, there will be times when something lies hidden beneath the surface out of view. The ultrasound is the tool used to locate hidden objects. Select the ultrasound now. Try moving the pointer around. If something is hidden, then you will be able to see it as a shadow. Ah, we caught a glimpse of a shadow. It appears to be a tumor. Move the ultrasound towards the shadow and press the A button. The shadow will stay displayed like this for a moment. Now's the chance to make an incision across it with the scalpel. Now we can see the tumor. Using the scalpel and the ultrasound like this will allow you to find and expose hidden objects. Let's treat this tumor. First, we need to drain the cytoplasm from the tumor. Use the drain to remove this fluid. Please select the drain. Next, use the drain on the tumor. The cytoplasm has been drained from the tumor. But if time passes, the cytoplasm will seep out again. Let's cut the tumor out with a scalpel before that happens. Follow the guideline and carefully cut around the tumor with the scalpel. The tumor has been cut out. Next, we will extract the tumor. Use the forceps to pick it up and carry it to the tray. The tumor has been extracted, but there is still a wound left behind from where we removed the tumor. A synthetic membrane must be used to treat the excision area. Select the forceps and carry the membrane from the tray and place it on top of the wound. Next, let's affix the synthetic membrane. Apply the antibiotic gel covering the entire synthetic membrane. The membrane has been firmly affixed. This completes the tumor removal procedure. This is the basic process to remove tumors, so be sure to remember it. That wraps up the explanations in this tutorial. Let's practice everything we've covered once more. All the blood pools have been treated. Use the antibiotic gel to treat the small wounds left behind after burning the small tumors. The large tumor is all that's left. Let's use the ultrasound to look around. There's the tumor shadow. Use the scalpel to make an incision across the shadow. Drain the cytoplasm from the tumor. The cytoplasm has been drained. Now use the scalpel and make an incision along the guideline. The tumor has been cut out. Select the forceps to extract it. There is a wound left behind. Place a synthetic membrane over the excision area. Now affix it with the antibiotic gel. Great work! That brings this tutorial to a close. Blaylock, how are you today? Good morning, sister. I'm doing well, thank you. Seems like it's finally starting to warm up. Oh, don't be fooled, dear. The cool temperatures can return quite suddenly, so be sure to carry a sweater with you at all times. Oh, okay, I will. <laughs> Looks like you've taught me something new about this town once again, sister. And be careful not to get caught in any storms. They can be absolutely dreadful. 
Well, I must be going, but if there's anything new troubling you, please come see me at church. Oh, thank you. But I've been okay lately. I I've been meaning to attend Sunday service, though. Good. I hope to see you before we move to the new church we're building. You will, I promise. Hey, Doc, am I gonna be okay? Why wouldn't you be? Well, if I had the cash, I would have gone to a real hospital. But I don't, so I'm stuck here. Mr. Carlton, you may not be aware, but this hospital is affiliated with Concordia Medical Institute in Los Angeles. Only the finest and most skilled doctors are sent here. Oh, really? Because everyone around town says that this is where all the rejects get dumped. That's ridiculous. They say that Dr. Montgomery, the guy who built this hospital, was really good. But that was, what, uh, 20 years ago? I mean, it doesn't matter now, because he's dead. Well, I'm still alive. So let's just try to get through this together, all right? Now, the bad news is you have a tumor. But the good news is it's benign. So don't worry. I could perform this operation in my sleep. Okay, the nurses will help you get ready, so please return to your room. All right. Can I call my wife first? I want to talk to her about my will. <sighs> Why in the world would they want me to come back? Dr. Vaughn, are you there? Oh, Dr. Hoover. I have an operation to prepare for, so... Well, I wanted to speak with you about that matter I mentioned earlier. <laughs> Perfect timing. I was just looking over those documents you gave me. I'm sorry, but I can't agree to this. Oh, and why not? I couldn't do that to this place. How would you function without us? So even if it's a direct order, I can't comply. You understand, don't you? Yes, but I believe I neglected to mention that Professor Wilkins contacted me personally. So perhaps you should consult with Valerie before you make up your mind. Well, I don't know about her, but there's no way I'm going back. Excuse me, Doctor. Dr. Blaylock is paging you. Please excuse me, Dr. Hoover. I have an operation to perform. I'd appreciate it if you could arrive on time, Marcus. Sorry, could you review the briefing? Of course, Dr. Vaughn. The test results show that Mr. Carlton has multiple tumors in his stomach. They're benign, but rather large. So as a precaution, we're going to excise them using the Powell procedure. The Powell procedure, huh? Well, that may be difficult for a reject doctor like me. Oh, Dr. Vaughn, you're not letting the patient's rude comment bother you, are you? I guess we'll just have to show him how talented we really are. Yeah, you're right, Val. I'm ready to begin the operation. Okay, let's begin the operation. Disinfect the area with antibiotic gel before you make your incision with the scalpel. Small tumors seem to have formed. Let's burn them before we extract the larger ones. Use antibiotic gel to heal any wounds caused by the burning of the small tumors. All the small tumors that can be visually confirmed have been treated. Now let's begin extracting the tumors. I'll get the ultrasound ready. Observe the area with the ultrasound. If you see a shadow, press the A button. The tumor has been located, but the shadow will disappear over time. Excise the center of it and expose the tumor while it's still visible. Follow the Powell procedure and drain the cytoplasm first. Place the drain on the tumor. The cytoplasm has been drained. Now excise the tumor with the scalpel. Use the forceps to place the excised tumor on the tray. Now we need to treat the excised area. Use the forceps to place the synthetic membrane on it. Apply antibiotic gel to affix it, and we'll be finished. The membrane has been attached. According to the test results, there should be more tumors. The affected area is around here. All right, 
Let's continue with the Powell procedure. Okay, now drain the cytoplasm. Excise it with the scalpel before the cytoplasm seeps out again. Please remove the excised tumor with the forceps. Small tumors have formed. It must be due to the main tumor. That seems to be all the large tumors. Please treat the excised area and the small tumors. Apply antibiotic gel on the synthetic membrane to affix it. The procedure is complete. Let's close him up. All right, close him up. Treat the bleeding before you bandage the sutured incision. That completes the operation. Good work, everyone. Man, <laughs> feel so much better. My stomach doesn't hurt for a change. I'm glad I decided to go through it after all. <laughs> if anyone else had performed the operation, I doubt it would have gone so well. Yeah, you guys were amazing. I'll be sure to ask for you two next time I need to have an operation done. Do you think there will be a next time here at Montgomery Memorial? For me, there will. <laughs> I thought you'd say that. What a storm. We'll have to close early. Too bad we can't leave, though. We finally managed to dodge the late shift, and we're stuck here anyway. Well, this bed has my name on it, so I'm gonna get some much-needed sleep. Hey, isn't that investigator from Concordia supposed to stop by sometime today? I'm sure you'll be the first they'll want questioned. Oh, don't worry. They won't be sending anyone out here in this weather. Hmm. I guess since no one else is around, all calls are being transferred to us. Dr. Blaylock speaking. Is this the hospital? I need help. Someone's been badly injured. Marcus, we have an emergency. Yes, this is Montgomery Memorial. Please remain calm. Now can you tell me what happened? A man was accidentally shot in the chest with a rifle. He's bleeding profusely. I estimate that he's already lost about 500 milliliters. His CS is 233. All right, we'll prepare for your arrival. How long before you can get here? Mister, how long will it take us to get there? Ten minutes. Can you get us there in five? We'll be there in five to ten minutes. Got it. We'll be ready. All the nurses have gone home. We'll have to do this on our own. Can you prep the OR? The IV, BGA, and CT are all ready to go. So is the blood count and cross-matching test. Looks like the storm's headed our way. I'm so glad you're still open. Here's the patient. We're ready for him. I've managed to temporarily stop the bleeding, but his vitals have dropped significantly. He's been shot in the chest. It looks like the bullet's still lodged inside him. His condition is critical. There isn't a moment to lose. Everyone's already gone home, so you'll have to help me get him on the stretcher. No problem. I'm actually a nurse. So if you're shorthanded, I can help you with the procedure. Now it all makes sense. I was wondering how you knew to report all that information. We can definitely use your help. Come on, let's go. Marcus, the patient's here. And this girl is a nurse. She's going to help us. Finally, some good news. So does she have a name? Oh, sorry, I didn't think to ask you. I'm Elena Salazar, from the Concordia Medical Institute in Los Angeles. I'm surprised Concordia sent someone as young as you. It's nice to see you again, Dr. Vaughn. Have we met before? Let's save the introductions for later. We've got an operation to perform. I know this is an emergency, but please allow me to advise you on the situation. 
The patient is a Caucasian male in his 50s. He's suffering from a gunshot wound from a rifle. The bullet didn't exit his body. It's still inside him. Due to the excessive amount of bleeding, there's a possibility the bullet nicked his heart. There's no time to waste. He's lucky you got him here so quickly. The objectives in this operation are to extract the bullet and treat the hemorrhaging areas. Okay, let's give it our all. All right, let's begin. Okay, let's give it our all. We need to treat the external wounds first. The round seems to have entered the body here. Let's treat the gunshot wound before we open him up. I'll prepare the synthetic membrane. Please affix it to the wound. Now affix it with antibiotic gel. The gunshot wound has been successfully treated. Now let's open him up. He's in bad shape. Please keep an eye on his vitals while you treat his wounds. Doctor, you located the gunshot wound. We're dealing with his heart so please be extremely careful when you extract the round. Let's drain the blood and determine the condition of the round. A mistake could be fatal. Please extract the round carefully. What? Only half? This round is split in two. The other half must still be lodged inside. We have no choice. We have to open the gunshot wound wider with a scalpel. We can't get a pulse with the round still lodged inside him. Please extract it quickly. Open up the gunshot wound with the scalpel and keep an eye on his vitals. A blood pool has formed. Please drain it quickly. You've located the remaining piece. Please extract it with care. The round has been extracted. Please treat the remaining wounds. That completes the treatment of the wounds. Now please resuscitate the patient using the defibrillator. Now move the Wii Remote forward. You have to press the paddles against his body. This gauge displays the amount of power being charged. Press the Z and V buttons together when the indicator reaches the green area. We have a pulse. <sighs> what a relief. Okay, let's close him up. Doctor, please close him up. Okay, let's finish by bandaging the sutured incision. That completes the operation. I was worried during that one part of the operation, but we made it. Great work, Doctor. That was a difficult operation. But it went well with your help. You're a very skilled nurse. Really? Yes, really. I'd love for you to assist us again sometime, if possible. But first, we should clarify some things. What instructions did Professor Wilkins give you prior to coming here, Elena? You're right. I shouldn't hide my true intentions. But I didn't come here to spy on you. And I didn't come here to help you. I came here to ask you to operate on me, Dr. Vaughn. What? It's the pump unit you implanted in my pancreas seven years ago. It isn't going to last much longer. Please, Dr. Vaughn, you have to help me. Now I remember. So you're that little girl. Elena has intractable pancreatic necrosis, an extremely rare genetic immune system disorder. The disease surfaces due to stress caused by aging, viruses, or chemical substances. If left untreated, it could cause septicemia, cellular necrosis, and a severe case of pancreatitis. Thankfully, an effective immune suppressant was developed in 2015. So now the disorder can be treated by implanting a high-efficiency pump system in the patient. 
But why do you need another operation? Is the system malfunctioning? Yeah, it's designed to last for 20 years. The antibody has denatured. The medication isn't working. To compensate, the pump's immunity suppressant control chips need to be replaced. And you expected that someone at a remote hospital like this could do it? I wanted to ask Dr. Vaughn to perform the operation, since he already saved me once before. I'm sorry I didn't contact you beforehand. Oh, no need to apologize. You're quite welcome here. Placing the pump unit is no easy task, and tampering with the implanted unit might cause stress and trigger an acute reaction. An inexperienced doctor wouldn't even attempt such an operation. Doctor, we've received a shipment from Concordia. According to the label, it requires refrigeration. I had them send all the materials necessary to perform the operation. Marcy, please refrigerate them at once. The patient appears to be in good condition, but that doesn't mean we have time to spare. Once the preliminary test results are in, we'll need to operate immediately. So, it's a difficult operation, huh? Yeah, it'll require some preparation. Oh, are you heading back home, Dr. Blaylock? Oh, hi, Elena. Yes, I am. You're staying here tonight, I assume. Yes. I was hoping to catch a glimpse of the Northern Lights. I see. Well, try to stay warm. By the way, I wanted to ask you about how you became a nurse. It must have been tough. Not only were you young, but you also had your illness to contend with. Well, I was working towards something I really wanted, so I was able to overcome those obstacles. And in the process, I was able to learn more about my condition. But you even received your international nursing license, right? That's amazing. I was grateful to be alive. People are capable of so much when they don't take life for granted. You're really mature for your age. I think you have a great career ahead of you. Thanks. I can't wait to get back to treating patients, as opposed to being one. <laughs> Northern Lights. It's so beautiful. Yes, it is, isn't it? Elena, let's both do our best during tomorrow's operation. Remain centered. Breathe. Focus. As the stars have taught me, I am one with life. I am one with now. Remain centered. Breathe. Focus. Should have unplugged the phone. Yeah, who is it? Greetings. I'm sorry to disturb you so late, Marcus. Professor Wilkins. I suspected this would be a good time to reach you. It would have been nice if I could have finished meditating. I see you're still dabbling in witchcraft. Well, that's good, because it is precisely that sorcery of yours we must rely on now. Look, I'll perform the surgery on Elena. Just don't expect me to return to Concordia. It seems there's been a misunderstanding. She's not the reason I contacted you, Marcus. There's another patient I'm concerned about. What are you trying to say? Stigma has awakened, and I require your assistance. What? Didn't I tell you that it was too dangerous to tamper with? So you don't think you share in any of the responsibility, hmm? Well, don't be ridiculous. It's too late to wash your hands of this. However, there's no reason to let your feelings of guilt torment you. In fact, I have some good news for you. The patient I'm referring to is me. Well then, we shall continue this conversation another time. Professor Wilkins has stigma. I can't believe it. You look distracted today. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. If you say so. Just as long as you'll be able to use your healing touch. Well, if all goes as planned, I won't need to. Don't worry, Elena. Everything will be fine. Oh, I'm not worried. Now, about these microchips we're replacing. 
Well, they went to the trouble of including instructions from the designer himself, so I'll indicate when you should bring them out. Fortunately, his directions are perfectly clear. I'll have to thank Professor Kerensky. The operation is sure to be a success with such a well-prepared team. All right, Elena. I'm going to begin administering the anesthesia. Okay. I'll try to get some sleep. All right, let's go over this one more time. The objective of this operation is to readjust the pump unit installed in the pancreas. Depending on the condition of the pump, we'll most likely have to change the control chips. There's a high risk that there may be hemorrhaging as a result of the chip exchange. Follow my lead and keep in mind that we may need to make some changes along the way. All right, let's make this an operation to remember. The control chips are ready, Doctor. Okay, keep them on hand so they'll be ready when I call for them. Okay, let's begin. We will now begin Miss Salazar's operation. The implant is in the pancreas. Please perform a laparotomy. This must be the implant. Let's use antibiotic gel to stop the hemorrhaging. The wounds have been treated, but it's only a matter of time before it ruptures again. We're going to have to replace the implant's control chips. First, we'll have to disable the current chips, and we can exchange them with the new ones. Use the laser to disable the chips. The control chip has been disabled. Use a scalpel to cut it out. Be careful of any hemorrhaging that may occur. The control chip has been disconnected. Please remove it with the forceps. Now insert the new control chip into where the old one used to be. The exchange is complete. We'll repeat this procedure with the rest of the control chips. The third chip has been exchanged. Just one more to go. Huh? There's massive hemorrhaging. Use the drain to clear away the blood before continuing with the chip exchange. Unbelievable! Another blood pool has formed. Something's not right. Why won't the hemorrhaging stop? I had a bad feeling something would go wrong. I guess I have no choice. Remain centered. Breathe. Focus. As the stars have taught me. Now, let's finish this. Okay, I've got some time until it hemorrhages again. I need to continue the operation while I can. We're done here. The healing touch. Amazing. Hmm. Sorry, but I'll have to leave the rest to you. I think I overdid it. Marcus? Hey! Nurse Bloom, get Marcus out of here. I'll handle the rest of the operation. <sighs> ah, you're awake. You seem completely drained, Marcus. Is it because you haven't used your gift recently? Yeah, I'm exhausted. How's our patient? I completed the rest of the operation. Her condition's stable now. I'll keep an eye on her, so feel free to get some rest. That sounds good. I'd probably end up freezing to death. I don't understand it. Why would they send someone with your ability to a place like this? All right, enough with the sarcasm. No, I'm serious. In fact, I'm a bit envious. Personality aside, I'd love to be you, Marcus. To have your ability? Don't sell yourself short, Val. What do you mean? You didn't come here for the tropical weather. You came to refine your techniques, to learn the healing touch. But if you've already given up on that, then there's no reason to stay here. Who are you to be judging me? You sulk around here all day like a mistreated dog licking your wounds. Sorry, Val. That didn't come out right. I'm not very good at giving pep talks. All I can think to say is try harder, which isn't very helpful, huh? I'm sorry, too. I shouldn't have snapped at you like that. I guess when it comes to interpersonal communication, I'm no Dr. Montgomery, huh? 
Well, maybe if you pray hard enough, he'll visit you in your dreams and teach you the right way. Imagine an operation. A patient's on the table in front of me. Now tense my index finger. And then I tense my index finger on my other hand. Imagine a star and follow the shape. One more time, remember how it felt. He's training himself to use the healing touch. All right, this is it. One more time. I can't let myself collapse during an operation again. One more time. Amazing. So that's how he focuses his concentration beyond his own limits. I wish I could do that. Hmm? I thought someone was watching me. I guess it was just my imagination. And while I have been educated in the school of modern medicine, the epitome of scientific knowledge, I cannot deny the energy I feel emanating from the spirits of those who are ill, and from that which dwells deep within me. I soften my eyes, I relax my ears, I quiet my mind and allow the energy to permeate my very being. The spirits raise my skills to a higher plane. And I awaken to my true self. Oh. It's no use. I, I can't understand any of this. It says the five-pointed star is a symbol of life. But when I look at it, it simply reminds me of a piece of okra in a bowl of gumbo. I guess the healing touch just isn't for an ordinary person like me. This door's no good. It's been totally warped by the snow. I guess it can't be helped. This hospital isn't exactly new. Well, this door isn't used very often, so it shouldn't be a problem. Hmm? I suppose we should still call and have it repaired. Is something wrong? Uh, oh, my... my stomach. Director? Director! Let's see. Your amylase count is good, your pancreas is functioning normally, your white blood cell count is fine, and I don't see any problems with your immune system. Well, that's good to hear. <laughs> Just let me know if you think you're recovering too quickly. I can change some of these numbers and extend your vacation. No, that's okay, doctor. I'd like to return to work as soon as possible. Although, once I've fully recovered, I do have another favor to ask. Marcus! Director Hoover just collapsed! What? He has multiple tumors in his small intestine, and they've already reached a fairly advanced stage. I've stabilized him with an IV and a blood transfusion, but he needs to be operated on right away. Why did he let his condition get so bad? If only he had taken better care of himself. He kept all his troubles and worries bottled up inside, not wanting to burden anyone with his problems. Standing around wondering why won't do him any good. We need to focus on the procedure. The CAT scan we took earlier has confirmed the presence of multiple tumors. The objective of this operation is to extract these tumors. It's progressed this far. I'm worried that there may be further complications. I'm concerned about his physical condition. He's not young, and this operation will be stressful. <sighs> You're the only ones who can help him. 
Don't worry, you can count on us. That's right, he's in good hands. I'll do whatever it takes. Let's start the procedure. Let's begin the operation. The tumors are located in the small intestine. Good luck. The area is a little inflamed. I'll get the anti-inflammatory. Use the syringe to inject the anti-inflammatory directly into the inflamed area. Inflammation treatment complete. Let's continue with the remainder of the operation. We found the tumor. Let's use the Powell procedure here. The tumor has been removed. Please treat the area where you made the excision. It looks like that's everything, but his vitals aren't stabilizing. I wonder if the preliminary scan missed anything. I'm preparing the magnification tool. Use it to search the area thoroughly. There's one over here? It's progressed much further than we expected. We need to extract them all. The tumor's been extracted. Now to treat the area around the excision. When we're done here, we should check out some other areas. Signs of tumors are decreasing. It spread much more than we anticipated. signs of tumors. Please remember to treat the remaining areas. His vitals are stable. I think we're okay now. I was pretty worried at one point though. Please close him up. The operation is complete. I'm sure the director will recover quickly. Great work, everyone. Well, we were able to remove all the tumors from your small intestine, sir. You should be up and around in about a week or so. But it is unclear whether or not the procedure was successful. Yes? My mother also suffered from tumors. It appears the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Sir, I strongly recommend that you take some time off to recuperate. Perhaps you could undergo treatment somewhere in a warmer climate. I appreciate your concern, Dr. Blaylock. But I've already made up my mind. As you know, I have been planning to close this hospital for some time now. Dr. Vaughn, Dr. Blaylock, you two should return to Concordia. Say, have you heard? They're building a new university hospital in Fairbanks. Knowing that a top-rate facility will be located nearby makes my decision much easier to live with. This hospital and I have grown old together. I believe it's time for both of us to retire. Congratulations, you're recovering extremely well. I don't see any problems with your pancreas. You're free to return to L.A. whenever you're ready. Have you thought any more about the favor I asked? I'd really like to go with you and assist you in the OR. You don't give up easily, do you? Sorry, but the answer is still no. Trust me, I have my reasons. You don't owe me anything. You need to think about your future. That's why I'm asking. I want to train alongside the world's best surgeon. 
I don't think you want to put your fate in the hands of a doctor who's about to lose his job. Go back to Concordia. You owe them an explanation. This may be the last time I walk these streets. I can't believe the hospital is actually closing. It's all so sudden. <sighs> well, I may not have made any major medical breakthroughs, but coming here wasn't a total waste. I suppose I'd better start thinking about what hospital I'd like to work at next. Oh, I almost forgot. I was going to go get some coffee at Jake's. It's the hospital. Hello? Dr. Blaylock, are you nearby? Yes, why? There's been an accident at the construction site. We need your help. I'm on my way. Val! Over here! Where's the injured party? She's in no condition to be moved. We'll have to treat her at the scene. She's lodged beneath the frame of the church. Our equipment's already been loaded onto the helicopter. Helena? Dr. Vaughn, please let me come. I know I can help. You won't regret it. I can't let you do that. You're still... I'm fine. You've seen to that, Doctor. We can't waste any more time. We're taking off. Come on, Elena. It's better to be safe than sorry. Suit yourself, but it's your life that's on the line. I'll take my chances. Sister Catherine! Oh, Dr. Blaylock. M my chest. Uh, I can't. Don't worry, sister. We'll get you out of there. It's no use. The frame's too heavy. We won't be able to move it. Oh, the pain is unbearable. Oh, Lord. Please. Help me. Don't give up, Sister Catherine. That's what you told me when I was down, so please, hang in there. It's risky, but we'll have to leave her where she is for now. Elena, get the instruments and anesthesia ready. Okay. She's suffering from a chest contusion and cyanosis. We need to open her up immediately. All right, Valerie, you take the lead. Her chest must have been compressed when she was caught in the collapse. Her heartbeat sounds distant. She may be suffering from cardiac tamponade. If that's the case, then blood will collect in her pericardium and cause diastolic heart failure. We don't have time to transport her back to the hospital. If Valerie's diagnosis is correct, we need to drain the blood. I have to save her, no matter what. All right, Val, you lead, and I'll assist. I won't let you die, Sister Catherine. Okay, let's begin the operation. I can't believe we have to perform a thoracic surgery in a place like this. Let's hurry and operate so we can get her out of here. Please treat the external injuries before we move to her interior. Injuries have been treated. Quickly, open her up. <sighs> it's like we thought. Doctor, I suspect there's hemorrhaging within the pericardium. Use the ultrasound to locate pockets of blood while treating the other wounds. Now drain the blood from the pericardium. Please suture the incision closed before it begins hemorrhaging again. Treatment of the hemorrhaging within the pericardium is complete. But her vitals aren't stabilizing. There must be another hemorrhage somewhere. Doctor, keep using the ultrasound to look for pockets of hemorrhaging. If we let it go on for too long, the pericardium may tear again. The pericardium has been sutured. Please make sure that there aren't any more hemorrhages. Should we risk carrying her out now? The vitals are still unstable, but... You're right. Considering her condition, it may be best to transport her now. This isn't good. Was there another collapse? No! Sister! 
If I can't save her life, I have no business calling myself a doctor. Spirit of life, guide my hands. She'll be okay now. Don't tell me. What was that? Please close her up, Doctor. We can transport her to the hospital for the time being. We can perform any remaining treatments there. Well done, Doctor. Finally able to free Sister Catherine, so I'm going to transport her to the hospital now. All right, let's head back then. She's made it through the worst of it, but we still need to watch for signs of crush syndrome. I'll monitor her condition. You did it, Valerie. I knew you had it in you, but I never imagined your gift would awaken so suddenly. I'm actually surprised myself. It wasn't the technique that was important for the healing touch. It was the opening of my heart. I finally understand what Dr. Montgomery was trying to say in his book. It was a difficult operation, but I feel like I can make my decision now. I want to continue working as a doctor. Yeah. I guess I've got some thinking to do myself. Have you finished packing? Yes, just now. I apologize for being so selfish. No worries. This is the hand fate's dealt us. As long as I remember that Concordia is just a stepping stone, it won't be that bad. But what about all the staff members here? What are they going to do? Oh, don't worry about us. We were able to negotiate a deal with Fairbanks Hospital. Everything is going to be transferred there. All of our patients, staff, and equipment. However, we may have a shortage of world-class doctors. My daughter and family have offered to look after me, so I'll be going to Seattle. The warmer climate should aid me in my recovery. If you happen to relapse, please contact me immediately. I'll drop whatever I'm doing and come operate on you. Thank you, Dr. Vaughn. But I'll do my best to make sure you won't have to. I gave Concordia a number of conditions under which Valerie and I would return, Elena. The most important being that you would be our assistant in the operating room. Dr. Vaughn! We expect nothing less than your very best. When I first arrived here at Montgomery Memorial, I absolutely hated it. But it's true. The greater the challenge, the more you appreciate the experience. Dr. Hoover was a strict but amazing teacher. Val. Yes? The operation that the professor is asking us to perform will be extremely difficult. If we're going to be successful, we'll have to work together. <laughs> what are you saying, Marcus? Of course we will. We're a team. A team that has endured the harshest of winters.
Got it on my first day back. Oh, good morning, Marcus. Morning. What are you doing out here? Aren't you going in? I got stopped because I forgot my ID. I told them to call Billy at the reception desk, but he doesn't work here anymore. Well, it's been three years, so I can't say I'm surprised. All right, I'll go straighten things out. <sighs> Thanks. My. You're here early, Dr. Vaughn. Hey, Dr. Russo. It's been a long time. Hello, Dr. Blaylock. How was Montgomery Memorial? Um, well... It was certainly challenging. I have to admit, I was quite envious when I heard that you were going. I mean, who wouldn't want a chance to get in touch with nature? <laughs> I heard that you became Chief Surgeon. Congratulations. Ah, thank you. Of course, that was six months ago. Sorry, I've been a little out of the loop. Think nothing of it. I understand completely. After all, you were quite far from civilization. Oh, by the way, Professor Wilkins is expecting you to. He's waiting in his office on the fifth floor. All right, we'll go see him. I wonder why they asked you to return, seeing as how you've made little progress on your research. 
This hospital must be busier than I thought. I hope you two live up to your reputations. Well then, if you'll excuse me. I see he's still as charming as ever. At least you know what to expect from him. Dr. Wilkins? Ah, welcome back. I've been waiting for you for quite some time. Yeah, it took me a while to decide. Have you been bedridden? This disease can be debilitating, but the symptoms haven't progressed that far just yet. I'm in better spirits than I look. In fact, I even make the rounds occasionally. Of course, that's only for the time being. What's this disease you're referring to? Relax, my dear. The symptoms have temporarily subsided. Once I've made the necessary arrangements, I'll explain my situation in greater detail. After all, this is a confidential matter, even within these walls. It's a secret? Yes. You could say that I am both a patient as well as a research subject. For now, I'd like you to resume your normal duties. I'm sure Rousseau will find something for you to do. Yeah, I'm sure he will. Well, we'll get to work then. Call if you need anything. Marcus, you went against my orders and ran off to Alaska. But in the end, you were forced to return here. I won't reproach you, as long as you accept your fate. Is that what you want me to do? Indeed. Hi, Dr. Blaylock. Oh, hello, Elena. Are you starting today? Yes, I am. I actually just returned from a brief vacation. I need to hurry up and get back into the swing of things here. But it's hard because there are so many new faces. Valerie, are you in? We've got an operation to perform. Are you serious? Russo took the liberty of volunteering us. Nice guy, huh? I have a feeling this is just a taste of what's to come. All right, I'll go prep. Elena. Can you assist? Definitely. I'll start setting up immediately. Allow me to begin the briefing for today's operation. Well, um... Oh, am I making you nervous? Just pretend I'm not here. Please continue, Elena. The patient is suffering from a putrefactive lung abscess due to Staphylococcus aureus. Both the x-rays as well as the CAT scan support this diagnosis. You have two objectives for this operation. Look for a shadow using the ultrasound, make an incision, and drain the pus. And of course, excise the tumor that's causing the problem. Is there anything you'd like to add, Dr. Rousseau? Oh no, I'll merely be observing. We'll try not to disappoint you. Well then, let's start the procedure. Let's begin the operation. We'll show Dr. Rousseau why we're here. It's festering. We need to drain the pus. Otherwise, it could lead to inflammation. It may begin to fester once you need to drain the pus. Doctor, it's becoming inflamed. I think you should inject some anti-inflammatory. So far, so good. But according to the diagnostics, the affected area may be larger than it appears. We need to use the magnification tool to take a closer look. Looks like the diagnostics were correct. We've got more work to do. Well done, Doctor!
have stabilized. The affected areas have all been treated. Now let's close them up. Looks like the procedure was a success. Good work, doctor. Well, Dr. Bon, I see that you haven't allowed yourself to get rusty. Surprised? Well, you could have suffered from frostbite. <laughs> ah, yes. I must explain our new post-op procedures. Things have changed since you left. The chart needs to be submitted to the clerks on the second floor. And surgeons are required to attend a case review session every Tuesday morning. However, we won't be needing you there just yet. I'll call for you when it's deemed necessary. Well then, excuse me. Thank you. We'll be implanting a pacemaker? Yes. You'll be performing an exchange operation to upgrade the one currently inside the patient. You'll also be performing the pre-op examination on her. Why us and not a cardiologist? Because I believe you two are better suited to perform the procedure. A team of specialists will be available to assist you, but I doubt that will be necessary. It seems they're expecting a lot from us, but you wouldn't know it by the way the staff's treated us. This can be considered as a preparation phase for the actual operation. An appropriate pacemaker has already been selected. You'll be implanting the same type I'm currently using. The same pacemaker you're using? Are you sure it's not gonna hurt? You'll be fast asleep the entire time. It'll be over before you know it. But what if I wake up? Will it hurt? I promise that won't happen. The medicine will keep you asleep, no matter what. If it's gonna keep me asleep, then how will I wake up? Will I sleep forever? Well, um, you'll wake up because you'll get hungry. Chloe, you heard that your heart isn't doing well, right? Right now you're okay because doctors put a machine in you that helps your heart. But we found out that machine isn't working like it should. So, if we don't put in a new machine, your chest is going to hurt. You don't want your chest to hurt, do you? No. All right then, the operation is going to be tomorrow. Let's both do our best. Come on, Chloe. Let's go back to your room. Don't worry, there's nothing to be scared about. You'll be all better real soon. Opening up a child's chest for the second time. As a doctor, I know I shouldn't be faced by it, but it's still heartbreaking. This operation has nothing to do with the professor's orders. Let's just concentrate on doing our best for that kid, okay? I'm not lying. It really hurts. Come on, there must be something you can do. I'm sorry, but we didn't find anything wrong when we examined you. That medication I used before seemed to help. How about some more of that? As I said before, I can't write you a prescription. Uh, Dr. Vaughn, can you please help me explain to this patient? Me, Dr. Chen? He won't listen to reason. And I refuse to write him a prescription. He's just pretending to be in pain because he's addicted to painkillers. What? Are you calling me a liar? Forget it, I'm out of here. What does he think this is, a street corner? He was wandering around, so I offered to help him. The first thing he said was, I need drugs. How did he get in? I don't know, but I should report him to security. By the way, Dr. Vaughn, I heard that you're conducting a pacemaker procedure today. That's right. Since I'm the new guy, I have no choice but to follow orders. I suppose that's true. Well, good luck. If all goes well, I'd like to ask you to be my assistant. I'll do my best to live up to those expectations.
Let's begin the conference for little Chloe. Please do. Your objective for this operation is to replace the patient's pacemaker. First, you'll have to stop the old pacemaker. Then, remove it and insert the new one. This operation will require great precision and will put a lot of strain on the patient's body. Please proceed with the utmost care. Of course. This is a very serious operation. She's only a child, so even a small mistake could be fatal. That's true. Well, good luck, you two. Let's get started. Today, we'll be replacing the patient's pacemaker. If I remember correctly, it's the same model as the professor's. Oh, really? Well, let's have a look. First, we need to stop her existing pacemaker. Please be careful, doctor. Okay, good job. Looks like you're ready to go on to the next... Doctor, the patient's going into cardiac arrest. We can't use the defibrillator because of her pacemaker. We'll have to massage the heart by hand. Wait for the hands to overlap, then press the A and B button simultaneously. Thank goodness. The patient has recovered. But we can't relax until we've completed the operation. There's a chance she'll go into cardiac arrest again, so keep an eye on the electrocardiogram. If that does occur, then we need to massage her heart immediately. Understood. Well then, are you ready to remove the pacemaker? Use the antibiotic gel to disinfect cut the lead attached to the heart. Now that you've cut the lead, hurry up and remove the lead now. Place the lead on the tray and cut the lead. Okay, looks like you got all the blood. Please place the lead on the tray. Her heart's fibrillating. Stop the procedure. She's going into cardiac arrest. We've got to do something. We have a pulse. Let's continue to please treat the remaining wounds. Now would you please place the old device on the tray. I'll get the new pacemaker ready. You can place it in the same spot as the old one. Next, attach the leads to the device. The first lead is ready. Both leads are attached to the... Now that you've found the right... Let's strain the... It may hemorrhage again. So please, let's suture the slit before it hem... That's it for this one. That's where the... We can't let too much blood collect. You'd better drain it. Okay. Remember to suture the slit, Doctor. Huh? We were almost done, too. All right, let's massage the heart. <sighs> okay. Mm -hmm. Cross your fingers. Let's activate the pacemaker. Good. It's working properly. She'll be all right now. That's great news. So all we need to do is close her up and we'll be finished. The operation was a success. Well done, Doctor. I'll be sure to report the results to the professor. Chloe, this is called an X-ray. It's a picture of the inside of your chest. This is the machine we put inside you during the operation. It's helping your heart beat. Wow, cool. That's what's inside me? It runs on electricity, so there are a few things you need to be careful about. Elena will explain the rules to you, so listen carefully, okay? Did you see it? Isn't it cool? Yes, it certainly is. But don't get carried away just because you feel better, okay? Now the pacemaker that's inside your chest is like a new friend. 
and it's going to be with you for the rest of your life. This is ridiculous. How long am I going to have to wait? Excuse me, miss? May I ask you something? Oh, are you here to visit a family member? If so, then the entrance is... Uh, no, that's not why I'm here. I have an appointment with Dr. Rousseau, the chief surgeon. But no one's been able to get my message to him. If that's the case, then let me call for his secretary. I'm sorry to inconvenience you. Thank you, though. You're a doctor here, aren't you? Yes, my name is Valerie Blaylock. Is Professor Wilkins busy? I was hoping I might get a chance to meet him. Y yes Well, the professor is... He's very busy. I rarely see him myself. Well, I guess it can't be helped. But I'd still like to meet him someday. Ah, oh, you must be Dr. Russo's secretary. Thank you. My name is Irene Quattro. I'm the director of Caduceus. The organization under the direct control of Health and Human Services? Thank you very much for your help today. I appreciate it. Hey, Marcus. It's already been 10 days, and he still hasn't told us about his condition. I'm sure he hasn't forgotten. He must have his reasons. He sure is taking his time, considering the trouble he went to to bring us back here. Oh, by the way, this morning I met someone that was here to see Rousseau. I was surprised when she introduced herself. Take a guess who she was. His mistress? Very funny. Come on, be serious. I know him better than you do. Well, it turns out she's the director of Caduceus. She oversees all of the medical research institutions located in the U.S. She's from Caduceus? Actually, she seemed more interested in speaking with Professor Wilkins. I wonder how she knows about him. Isn't it strange? It sounds like trouble, if you ask me. Dr. Vaughn! Dr. Blaylock! We need you in the OR! What's the matter, Elena? Three people were hit by a car. Two are in critical condition. Dr. Rousseau began treating the one who was in the worst state. But he left to treat a different patient and ordered you two to take the ones in critical condition. We can't afford to waste any time. His life's in jeopardy. The patient is Ricardo Garcia, a 35-year-old male. He was in a car accident. He has injuries to the abdomen, including a few broken ribs and a pierced spleen. This doesn't look good. In this operation, we have several objectives. We need to treat his lacerations, repair his broken ribs, and attend to his spleen. This will be a difficult operation. No wonder Russo took off so fast. Well, I'm sure we can handle it. We've analyzed his blood type and done the necessary screening and cross-matching. We've also got an ample supply of blood on hand. All you need to worry about is the operation. I'm ready to start the procedure. Doctor, hurry! The patient's gone into cardiac arrest. We need to use the defibrillator. Alright, we have a pulse. His spleen's in bad shape, and his vitals are dropping because of massive hemorrhaging. We'll have to retrieve the bone fragments while treating the injuries and hemorrhages. We won't be able to suture that big of a wound. We'll have to close it first with the force. Now pinch Okay. Now hurry up. That takes care of the largest wound. But don't forget about the others. with the bone fragments, but the spleen requires immediate treatment. Looks like you got all the bone fragments. Now that we've taken care of the wounds, we can reassemble the bone fragments. So far, so good. 
We're almost done. What? But that was the last piece. Don't tell me we missed a fragment. This isn't good. We'll have to use the defibrillator. Was that hemorrhagic shock? His spleen was bleeding pretty heavily. Is that it? No wonder we missed it. Okay, Doctor. You know what to do. Be sure to keep an eye on his vitals, though. We've got all the pieces now. But please treat his remaining wounds first. Let's place the last bone fragment. All the pieces are in place. Let's cement them together with antibiotic gel. Well, that completes the operation. Please close him up. It was an unexpected operation, but I'm glad it went smoothly. Well done, team. I see that you are both quite skilled. I'm sorry, you are? I'm Irene Quattro from Caduceus. Nice to meet you. I heard there was an emergency, so I changed into my surgical gown. But I see that wasn't necessary. Valerie, is this the woman you were telling me about? Thank you, ma'am. It's an honor to receive such praise. A doctor with a healing touch. It's been a while since I've been surprised like this. If the opportunity arises, I'd like to see it used again. I'd be glad to show you. This is an impressive hospital. I hope that we meet again. Please excuse me. I don't think it was good for her to have seen that. What do you mean, Marcus? Thank you. Thank you so much, Doctor. We were told he wouldn't make it, but you... you saved him. I just did my best, Mrs. Garcia. Considering his injuries, it's a miracle he survived. He must have an angel looking over his shoulder. I don't know how we'll ever repay you. Thank you so much. There's no need for tears. Now, let's discuss his future treatment options. Oh, as long as he's in your hands, Dr. Russo, I know he'll be okay. Hmm. Oh, it's you, Vaughn. Marcus, he's... It's not worth getting upset over. The patient is all right. That's all that matters. Professor Wilkins has asked to see us, so we'd better get going. I suppose you're right. Dr. Rousseau, is something wrong? Oh, no, it's nothing. Please come with me, Mrs. Garcia. Let's go see how your husband is faring. So, I heard that Rousseau took credit for everything. You must be disappointed. I'm just glad the patient's okay. He's an excellent doctor, although rather shrewd at times. And I would never trust him to operate on me. That's why I summoned you here, Marcus. You have a rare talent. I didn't want to come back. I'm aware of that. Regardless, we'll meet tomorrow to discuss my operation. The procedure is scheduled for four days from now. I'll leave you to choose your team. Okay. So, you're finally going to tell us, huh, Professor? I led you all to believe that I was suffering from a chronic heart disease. But now that my preparations are complete, I will reveal the true nature of my illness. Dr. Rousseau is on the team, too? Yeah, but he won't be operating. What I am asking you all to do is treat an unknown disease. Yes, I'm asking you to face the unknown. An unknown disease? By certain means, I received a mouse with an unprecedented illness. 
It was a pathogen born as a result of gene-related medical research. I isolated it, analyzed it, and became deeply interested in it, despite my initial fears. It was such a unique disease. Curiosity, man's greatest weakness. Dr. Vaughn? Never mind. As a member of the medical community, I immediately realized the importance of this discovery. And so I began researching the disease. But before I could complete my research, I myself became infected. Its communicability between animals and humans was quite a surprise. It's a tragedy for us all, Professor. It breaks my heart to learn of your infection. What was the means of transmission? It's too late to ascertain now, but it must have occurred while I was researching it. I may have accidentally pricked myself with a needle. My hands aren't as steady as they once were. I don't believe it is highly communicable, but we should still be careful. One thing is for certain, it's not an airborne disease. And what about your condition? You seem to be rather stable right now, Professor. I do have some data which I collected during my experiments. It's dormant at the moment, but it becomes active when the carrier experiences stress. Its invasiveness is quite strong. And it's at least as serious, if not worse, than an acute virus or a parasite invasion. So this operation must be performed right away. That's why you selected us. Yes, it is a new disease, so as you may suspect, no medication or vaccine is available yet. Extraction is the only viable option. Dr. Vaughn, this is a serious responsibility. Indeed. This disease manifests itself in mysterious ways. I've tentatively named it Stigma. We will refer to it by this name for now. But please keep this information confidential. I will also grant you access to my research data, but you are only permitted to read through it. Infected accidentally? That can't be. That's not its nature. The professor's hiding something. Forgoing your meditation today? Don't allow this disease to trouble you. Just accept that it's beyond your comprehension. Should someone with your condition be up at this hour? I have one more favor to ask of you. That's why I'm here. I'll save your life. What more do you want? If for some reason the operation is a failure, then I want you to destroy all my research concerning stigma. <laughs> what? This is to be my research and mine alone, whether or not the operation is successful. You should have no objections to this. After all, wasn't it your wish three years ago that it all disappear? Well then, I bid you good luck. I've taken a look at the data, but I don't know what to say. That makes two of us. The pathogen's mobility is simply unbelievable. Who knows what kind of damage it's capable of? Based on the data, it's unlikely that medication will be effective, so our only option is to... Burn it with the laser. That's the only way. Has there been any change in the professor's condition? He's still stable. He should have enough strength to endure the operation. If the professor's data is accurate, then this research will make medical history. Mistakes cannot be made. I presume you understand that. Relax, we've got it under control. He's right, this is an important procedure. We can't afford to fail. We're ready to begin the procedure. Based on what we know, we expect that stigma will become active once we open up the professor. Please be extremely careful. Lacerations? But we didn't see any on the CAT scan. Are you suggesting that the pathogen did this within the last few moments? We need to suture the wounds immediately and try to prevent any further damage. 
Well done, Doctor. But please keep an eye out. There it is. My God. Look at it. All right, let's do this. Get the laser ready. It's working. Keep using the laser. We did it. Stigma's gone. Marvelous. The professor will be... Wait, he's not stabilizing. We better take another look. Stigma again? But how? It's tearing up his insides. Can't believe this. One down, one to go. They fused together? Well, it can't have changed that much. The laser should still work. The laser seems to be working. before it causes more damage. Is that it? His vitals are stabilizing. He's gonna be all right. Let's close him up. That was truly a menacing organism. I must begin analyzing the data immediately. Congratulations, you did it! It was my responsibility. Is something wrong, Marcus? No, nothing. I should just be thankful that it went well. I'm glad his body withstood the operation. At this rate, it seems he'll make a full recovery. Still, that was a daunting procedure. I can't believe that such a disease exists, and that we were able to treat it. I hope this is the last we see of it, though. I must say, this stigma is certainly an intriguing disease. Doctors around the world will be astounded. Oh, he's awake. Professor, can you hear me? Yes. I'm fully conscious. The operation was a success. All the pathogens were removed. And your heart is functioning normally. It was a complicated procedure, but we were able to complete it. Being operated on while you still had your strength should speed your recovery. Well, Professor, congratulations on the success of your operation. Thank you. That stigma is quite a remarkable disease. I never imagined such an insidious pathogen could exist. It amazes me each time I watch the recording of the operation. Recording? Rousseau, I thought I made myself clear. I only gave you permission to read through the existing data. Y yes, that's true, but I, I thought perhaps... My orders are absolute. Or are you scheming to steal my research? D don't be silly, Professor. I'm completely loyal to... I want everything in this room. That includes any recordings and extracted organisms. I won't have them where I... Oh! Professor, please. You must stay calm. Dr. Rousseau, can't whatever you have to discuss with Professor Wilkins wait until later? Yes, well then, uh, please excuse me, Professor. Please, I'd like to be alone for a while. Don't worry, 
I won't overexert myself. Then we'll return later to explain your status. Yes. Thank you. We don't have a sample or any data. So how do you intend to study stigma, Marcus? Are you just going to pretend it doesn't exist? No self-respecting doctor would admit the existence of such a thing, outside of a sci-fi movie. That's only because they lack the knowledge. Oh, really? Do you recall the incident that occurred 10 years ago? A deadly man-made infectious disease spread throughout the world. It was known as guilt. Now that you mention it, I do remember that. Is there a connection between guilt and stigma? Most likely not. The professor has already tested that vaccine on it. It had absolutely no effect. I guess I can see why Rousseau is so intrigued by it. If he was the one to announce it to the world, he'd become the most renowned doctor in medical history. Dr. Vaughn, Dr. Blaylock, two patients have been added to each of your schedules. Aren't these Rousseau's patients? Yes, but he's very busy. Looks like I better get used to being sleep deprived. It seems Professor Wilkins is on the road to wellness. But how long will it take for him to fully recover? The professor's a lot tougher than he looks, you know. Dr. Rousseau must be hoping he resigns, or at least relinquishes some of his authority. I heard another hospital has been courting him as well. He's had a lot of visitors lately. Perhaps he's going to take up a position as a lecturer somewhere. I envy him. He's the talk of the entire hospital. Oh, but he's not the only one. Meaning what exactly? I've heard from more than one source that someone will be paying you two a visit soon as well. Maybe Professor To Be Russo will let you know about it. That's not really my idea of a promotion. Well, I'm calling it quits for today. Hopefully tomorrow won't be as stressful. What about the professor's charts? He's been updating them himself. It is top secret, after all. Speak of the devil. He's paging us. I wonder what he wants. He didn't mention anything to me. Is that the fire alarm? Something must have happened. We better go check on the professor. That man's on fire! We have to help him! Be careful, Marcus! Drop to the floor! Hurry! Valerie, isn't there a fire extinguisher around? Doctor, stand aside! <sighs> Quick thinking, Elena. Someone... <laughs> Professor Wilkins and... Stigma. Russo, is that you? And then... Set fire. Hang in there. We're going to get you some help. He's been badly burned. His life is in danger. I'll get something to transport him with. Thank you, Elena. Get the OR ready, too. The patient is suffering from burns all over his body, concentrated on the left side. Some of them are third-degree burns, I'm afraid. The burned area covers over 20% of his body, He's in extremely critical condition. We'll have to use skin grafts. I suggest that we transplant skin from the right half of his body, which has fewer burns. If we can't use synthetic skin, then that's our only option. If we inject culture fluids, we'll be able to avoid further damage. Since we'll be working on third degree burns, I've prepared some coolants as well. I've said this already, but he's in critical condition. Please, we have to hurry. I'm ready to begin the operation. These burns are pretty severe. Skin grafts are the only option. We'll have to remove skin from elsewhere before we can begin treating the burns. All right, I'll get the culture fluid ready for you. You'll have to inject it into the right side of his body. The culture is taking effect. Please use the scalpel to remove a section of the epidermis. Once 
we're ready to transfer the donor skin, we'll do so using the forceps. You'll most likely need several grafts, so we should collect enough tissue before starting. Let's look for other unburnt areas and follow the same procedure. The most severe burns have already turned black. We'll need to excise this necrotic tissue. Are you prepared to begin debridement? I'll get the coolant ready. Please inject it directly into the blackened tissue. Now, please, it looks like this area is going to need more. We are done with this area. Let's go on to it. The affected area is bleeding heavily. Hurry up and drain it. Vitals have dropped? Keep it up. The coolant seems to be working. Now, use the scalp. You can place the excised tissue on. The area has been debrided, so you can proceed to drain the blood. the treatment. Great work, team. The professor's office is nothing but ashes. Fortunately, no one seems to have been inside. But the professor's whereabouts are unknown and we have reason to believe the data was stolen. According to what Russo said, the professor seems to have been kidnapped. What did the detectives ask you? Same things they asked you. What did I see when I arrived at the scene? Did I notice anything suspicious? You know, the usual. Oh, they also asked about the professor's condition. I didn't say anything about stigma, for now. They wouldn't understand anyway. I can't believe he was kidnapped. What's their motive? They obviously want more than just a ransom. What's going to happen to this hospital? What about us? The media is going to be all over this incident. We won't have time to examine our patients. Dr. Blaylock, Dr. Vaughn, there's someone here to see you. If it's another investigator, then forget it. Actually, it's the director of Caduceus. What? Long time no see. Regarding what happened the other day, you have my sympathy. Thanks. Um, how can we help you? It's a little complicated, so I'll get right to the point. After seeing the two of you in action, I negotiated with the hospital to have you both transferred to our staff. You're recruiting us? That was the plan, but circumstances have changed. So what does that mean? Dr. Vaughn, Dr. Blaylock, by the authority of the federal government, I hereby order your immediate transfer to Caduceus. The authority of the federal government? The decision was made based on the research we believe Professor Wilkins was performing. 
As skilled doctors and colleagues of the professor, we require your expertise in the U.S. branch of Caduceus. We'll do our best to accommodate any staff member requests you may have. I can't believe it. We're going to Caduceus. on the Atlantic coast of the United States of America. In a location close to the nation's capital lies the U.S. branch of Caduceus, the international organization that treats and researches new diseases. Caduceus USA falls under the jurisdiction of Health and Human Services, yet they have their own authority to execute private missions. They are dedicated to the treatment of intractable diseases and the prevention of infectious illnesses. Marcus Vaughn, age 34, surgeon, place of birth, California. Valerie Blaylock, age 28, surgeon, place of birth, North Carolina. Elena Salazar, age 20, nurse, place of birth, California. You three will be assigned to the newly created Special Disease Counteraction Team. Now, sign here, and on the written oath and the waiver form. Why the sour face, Dr. Vaughn? You're forming a new team? What, is this an anti-stigma measure? You mean is it a result of Professor Wilkins' procedure? Well, we've had this planned for a long time, though the discovery of stigma did hasten its establishment. At least things will be easier on you, since it's such a small team. Thanks for your concern. But if we'll be dealing with mainly new diseases, then we'll be performing fewer operations. I hope that won't affect my salary. Leave it to you to think of that, Marcus. No need to worry. We'll be referring plenty of patients to you. Special cases which may require the healing touch. Well, that's good to hear. Your job description won't change much either, Elena. Your priority will be to assist Dr. Vaughn and Dr. Blaylock with the operations assigned to them. Thank you very much. I'll do my best, just as I did at Concordia. Then, the first thing I'd like you to do is become familiar with Caduceus and provide us with whatever information you have on stigma. Regarding that matter, we've only encountered stigma in one operation. There's really not much for us to disclose, especially since Professor Wilkins kept a tight lid on all the data. That's all right, just tell us whatever you know. You may be surprised at how much you recall, Extraordinary events leave deep imprints on our memory. I hope we'll be able to live up to your high expectations. I was wondering, are we going to be questioned about the disappearance of the professor? That won't be necessary. This is a hospital, not a police department. Well, we don't know where the professor was taken. They haven't even demanded a ransom. I still feel uneasy about all this, but we'll do what we can. Okay, let me show you around. I hope we can cover everything before my guest arrives. Now, this is your office. Wow, look at this equipment. I knew Caduceus would be amazing, but this is too much. Your responsibilities won't be much different than they were in the past. Even though you're now members of Caduceus, you're still first and foremost doctors. We dedicate ourselves to research here, but at the same time, we see regular patients. A major part of your duties will be to keep your skills sharp. Well, it can't be any worse than Concordia. I mean, we weren't exactly welcome there. Now, let's take a look at where you'll be performing your surgeries. There are a total of 10 ORs, each one equipped for a different type of procedure. Oh, Dr. Everett. Director! Do you know where Dr. Suji is? This is Dr. Everett, our chief surgeon. He looks like he's in pain. Is something wrong? I've got cholelithiasis. I was going to ask Dr. Suji to remove the gallstones, but I can't find her anywhere. Uh, uh, I can't take this anymore. Director, can you fragment them for me, please? I wish I could but I'm expecting a visitor shortly. But I can't stand the pain any longer. Hmm. 
Are these the new doctors you were talking about? Yes, they are. I don't care who does it. I just need help. I can walk you through the procedure if necessary. I'll even suture myself when it's over. I know this is sudden, but would you mind? Not at all. Dr. Everett, I'm... Skip the formalities. Just prep for surgery. Ah! Let me explain the chart. Dr. Everett has cholelithiasis and has been experiencing pain for three years. Three years? Yes. I've told him repeatedly to admit himself to the ward and have it treated. However, it seems he's far more interested in taking care of patients than himself. Typical doctor, neglecting his own needs. I guess that just goes to show how passionate Dr. Everett is about his job. Hmm, when you put it that way. Oh, excuse me, please continue. We'll use a laser to fragment the gallstone in this operation. Please extract the gallbladder as well during the procedure. So we'll be taking care of the cause of his pain as well. Well, I must be going. I'll leave the rest to you three. Okay, let's get started. We will now begin the operation. Please disinfect the incision area and open him up. First, we'll be fragmenting the gallstones passing through the ductal epithelium. If a gallstone passes completely through the epithelium, the patient's vitals will drop. Let's begin by using the ultrasound to locate the gallstones. There's a gallstone. Use the lake. The gallstone has been fragmented. Let's begin extracting the gallbladder as well. First, inject the sedative into the gallbladder. We can't remove it all at once. Let's cut it into multiple segments before we take it out. And don't forget to use the laser on the gallstones while doing so. All right then, please begin. The cut has caused hemorrhaging. Drain the blood before continuing. The gallstone is split into two parts. The blood has been drained. The second segment has been cut off. The hemorrhaging is getting worse. Don't forget to keep fragment. The third segment has been cut off. One more to go. Remove the last segment before it hemorrhages again. The gallbladder has been excised. This should prevent the gallstones from forming. Please extract the gallbladder and place it on the tray. Gallbladder extraction complete. Please treat the hemorrhaging area with antibiotic gel and suture the epithelium closed. The gallstones have been eliminated and the gallbladder has been extracted. Please close him up. complete. Good job. We just arrived and we're already performing emergency surgeries. I can't wait to see what's next. But I guess it was a good chance to get our feet wet. You always see the positive, Val. Oh, you're leaving? I was glad to hear the operation went well. Of course, I'd expect nothing less. We always do our best. I hear that often, but for some reason, this time I believe it. Tomorrow, we'll meet to discuss stigma. I'm counting on you both. Like she said, we always do our best. Wow, you assisted in an operation on your first day here? You must be good. No, it's the doctors who are good. I'm just fortunate to be working with them. Sounds like you work well with them. In my case, it depends on who I'm assisting. I get along with Dr. Everett, but Dr. Tsuji, on the other hand... Oh, forget I said anything. By the way, Ms. Newman, about the operating room's support system, Oh, call me Leslie. Everyone else does. 
Now it's our responsibility as nurses to manage the support system. It'll probably take some time, but once you get used to it, you'll be able to update an e-chart in a snap. Want to give it a try in a vacant OR? I'd love to. Regarding this new disease, which has tentatively been named stigma, we received a report from the National Security Council and have begun an independent investigation. Its threat level is unknown, but I can say that the pathogen possesses astonishing mobility. It was unclear whether it even existed until now, but the Wilkins case put an end to the debate. And we are basing that assumption on the testimony of our two new doctors, yes? Oh, pardon me. I'm Kanae Tsuji, a surgeon here. It's nice to meet you both. You're absolutely correct, Kanae. While the information provided by Dr. Vaughn and Dr. Blaylock is highly reliable, our own investigation at Concordia also validates the theory. And, it's worth noting, Professor Wilkins was conducting all the research on his own, without help from other doctors. We spent less than a month there following our transfer from Alaska. But during that time, the professor seemed somewhat paranoid about an information leak. To be honest, I'm surprised there was a leak, no matter how small. The NSC never tells us their source of information. I bet the military is involved in it somehow. Let's try to make do with the information we have at hand. At this point, the research can no longer be left exclusively to Wilkins. It's now the concern of our entire organization. What? Prior to your transfer here, we received reports of suspicious cases from various countries. We've already discussed those cases in a previous meeting. The pathogens in question were confused with various parasites, so nothing was conclusive. If any new cases occur, they should now be reported to Caduceus International. It's unfortunate, though, that Professor Wilkins' data was destroyed, and by an unidentified assailant at that. Am I the only one here who feels uneasy about this? We're hoping that the professor is still alive. From now on, if any new cases of stigma arise here in the U.S., the patients will be transferred to this facility whenever possible. Both Health and Human Services and the National Security Council have agreed to this. The operating surgeons will be Dr. Vaughn and Dr. Blaylock. Their prior experience dealing with stigma will be invaluable. I personally stand behind them, 100%. The rest of you will be invited to witness their expertise very soon. I look forward to seeing the infamous healing touch. That was a little unexpected. What have we gotten ourselves into, Marcus? Were you as shocked as I was by what they already knew? Not really. A doctor considers any and all possibilities. Well, I, for one, am surprised. I had no idea there was data on stigma, other than what the professor had collected. Well, we've got more important things to worry about. We're leaving for the tech department tomorrow morning at 8, right? Yes, so don't be late. All right, then I'm going to go home and get some sleep. <laughs> Doctor, we just received an emergency request for help. What happened? There was a big accident on the freeway. More than 30 people are in serious condition. The request came from the state hospital. Now I feel right at home. Elena, can you let them know that we'll accept the patients? No eye response, incoherent speech, decerebrate posture, E1, V3, M2. He's under 8 on the Glasgow Coma Scale. He's in critical condition. The patient has taken considerable damage to the right half of his body, and his lungs may be at risk. He's definitely in bad shape. The exact locations of his injuries are difficult to determine right now. His vitals aren't stable either. Please hurry, but be careful. There's no time to lose. Let's begin immediately. We'll save him, no matter what. Let's begin the operation. Beginning the operation. The patient's condition has worsened since his arrival. Please operate quickly. Begin by treating the external wounds. Turn on
wounds have been treated, but I assume that it can only be worse on the inside. Let's open him up and begin treating his internal organs. I'm confirming interior wounds and the presence of foreign debris. Let's keep an eye on his vitals and treat everything. This wound can't be sutured like this. You'll need to use the forceps to hold it closed temporarily. Hold one side of the wound with a force. Please suture it quickly, or the wound will open again. That's the worst of the wounds. Please begin treating the others. That should do it for this area. Now to move on to the others. Use the magnification tool to change where we're looking. There should be other injuries nearby. should be all right for now. All right, let's close them up. Operation complete. Excellent work. the last of the patients. The three of you can wrap things up now. All right. Thanks, Leslie. That was very impressive. If you don't mind, I'd like to assist you again sometime. It's 3 a.m.? Man, talk about a long day. Well, this is what you wanted, right? To continue seeing patients. Yeah, I guess that's the life of a doctor, no matter where you are. All right, I'll see you tomorrow, bright and early. Hey, don't worry. If we can survive in Alaska, we can survive anywhere. So, I have a new job for you. But first, let me introduce you to our head of research. Hello, my name is Dr. Robert Cromwell. Dr. Blaylock and Dr. Vaughn, I presume. It's nice to meet you. You must be busy adapting to Caduceus, as well as the newly established team. But the director recommended you too, so I would appreciate your assistance. It's nice to meet you too. It would be our pleasure to help. Good. I'd like you to participate in clinical testing under the supervision of the research lab. Let me remind you that it is the duty of those in the medical field to not only cure patients, but to also research and pioneer new treatments. Doctors and researchers must work together to fight diseases both present and future. That's the purpose of Caduceus. There may be some interesting characters here, but they're all excellent doctors. I consider myself very fortunate to be able to conduct medical research among them. And on top of that, we now have the assistance of two truly gifted doctors with the healing touch. I firmly believe that with your precision, the data we'll be able to collect will be invaluable. That is why I'm so enthusiastic about your surgical skills. You don't have any objections, do you? I appreciate your vote of confidence, even if it is a bit exaggerated. He's a dedicated professional, although he tends to be long-winded. Now then, there's an operation I'd like the two of you to perform. The research you're contributing to will give new hope to heart disease patients everywhere. I'll explain as I show you my lab. It's true that many people frown upon our astronomical research budget. Mostly journalists and politicians who are trying to make a name for themselves. You know how difficult it is to produce significant results when conducting revolutionary research. But thankfully, we also have generous supporters such as... Oh, Dr. Cromwell, you have friends with you today. Would you introduce me? Pretty please. Isabella, 
you really should start acting more professional. This is Ms. Vasquez. She's a representative of the Humani Corporation. I'm Dr. Blaylock. Dr. Vaughn. Nice to meet you, handsome. We're partnered with a number of large pharmaceutical companies and medical manufacturers, including Humani, who've been a tremendous help to us. I hope my looks don't give you the wrong impression about our company. Humani is a major player in this industry, and I've been known to play hardball when needed. Humani holds several lucrative pharmaceutical patents and leads the way in regenerative medicine. Well, if there's anything I can do for you, just let me know. We have a research specialist from Humani on staff as well. She's a very talented young woman and has produced great results. I believe she's nearby. Cynthia, can you spare a moment? I'll go get her, Dr. Cromwell. Thank you. I'd appreciate it. The operation that you'll be performing would not be possible without her help. Yes, Dr. Cromwell? Oh, that's right. You said you'd introduce me to the doctors today. This is Cynthia Kazakov. She's a beautiful woman, as you can see, and quite brilliant. Cynthia Kazakov? You wouldn't happen to be from Trinity Medical School, would you? Valerie? Valerie Blaylock? Yeah, it's me. You became a doctor! Congratulations! Thanks. Wow, I never expected to see you here, of all places. You're going to be helping us? This is great! I'm Marcus Vaughn. Sorry to interrupt such a touching reunion. Nice to meet you, Doctor. So, you two are old friends. I have a feeling this will be a fruitful partnership. Now, Cynthia, can you explain to them about the cardiac patch? Allow me to explain the details of the operation, as well as the usage of the myocardium patch. Our patient is a 10-year-old girl with an occlusion in her heart. Her heart functions are deteriorating. If this continues, she'll have a myocardial infarction. That's where the myocardial patch comes in. I don't know much about it. It's a form of synthetic membrane, correct? Yes, it's a new type of synthetic membrane that uses the whole cell voltage clamp. The membrane itself is elastic and helps the heart move and function. That's amazing! It truly is a miracle of science. It's only as incredible as the skills of the people using it. Nothing like a little pressure. I don't mind, though. That motivates me. We'll do our best, of course. I can promise you that. I'm glad to hear it. So, we'll be applying this myocardial patch by positioning it according to the guide. Is that this operation's objective? Yes, that's correct. This operation will be performed without stopping her heart. But I have faith in Caduceus and in all of you. Let's start. Let's begin the operation. We'll be operating on the heart. Please open her up. Let's confirm the procedure of this operation. Three areas of occlusion have been located on the heart. We'll apply the myocardium patch to them all. Follow the guide and keep the placement and angle in mind when applying the patch. If the myocardium patch isn't placed correctly, the patient may undergo cardiac arrest. Be careful. Start by applying antibiotic gel to the occlusion areas. The first myocardium patch will be applied here. Carefully match the location and angle of the patch with the pattern on the heart. The myocardium patch has been successfully applied to the occlusion area. Her heart rate is increasing. There's a possibility that the already weakened areas of the myocardium may hemorrhage. If you find a hemorrhage, treat it with the antibiotic gel before its condition worsens. Here's the next occlusion area. Let's continue the... What? The guide moved? Does this mean that we'll have to time the placement now that the heart is beating faster? Apply the patch when the size of the guide matches the size of the pack. The second occlusion area has been treated. One more to go. Her heart rate is increasing. Be careful when placing the patch. Watch your timing. 
the patches have begun synchronizing with the myocardium's movement. And her heart rate is returning to normal. She should be all right now. Let's close her up. Please close her up. We're finished. Good work, everyone. That was a flawless operation, simply perfect. The patch is sure to integrate with the existing tissue. The patient should recover nicely. I think we'll see excellent results, Valerie. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, I wouldn't mind doing more operations like this one. Well, we wouldn't want to take up all of your time. The director has already spoken to us regarding the research on stigma. We're currently in the planning stages. In time, we'll show you what we're capable of. Right, Cynthia? Yes, Dr. Cromwell. The NIH has received a request for help from a hospital in Texas. They're having difficulty with the diagnosis. Based on the patient's chart, there's a good chance that it's stigma. So, this is what we're dealing with, hmm? These two pictures were taken only a few hours apart? Look how far the focus is shifted. And its size has increased drastically. A biopsy was attempted, but they were unable to obtain a sample of the pathogen. The patient will arrive in roughly three hours. Vaughn and Blaylock will be performing the surgery. We'll check the patient's condition upon her arrival and then proceed with the operation. We're treading on unknown territory, so we'd appreciate your support, Dr. Tsuji. I highly doubt that you two will need my help, but I'll get ready nonetheless. The patient's vitals are stable. Blood pressure 110 over 60, heart rate 60 beats per minute. Any case history? She was involved in an accident two months ago. Laceration on the right thigh. Looks like they used artificial blood for transfusion, q heme blood from Syntec Labs to be exact. Are there any contraindications? None that I'm aware of, but can you check with them just in case? Will do. The affected area is the liver. The course of treatment will be determined during the procedure. However, I have a feeling this will be different than the professor's case. Even so, I'm sure our experience with stigma will prove invaluable. Let's stay positive. According to the test results, this stigma is completely different from the one we saw before. There are some similarities, though, such as high mobility. It tries every conceivable method to make its victims suffer. It's like a nightmare. If it is stigma, then there must be a core somewhere, even if it looks different. If we can find and attack it, we may be able to identify the key to stopping it. A core? Now that you mention it, there was something in the report about that. That's right. We saw something like a core when we were operating on Professor Wilkins. I'm surprised you remember, Marcus. Call it a hunch. A hunch? Well, at least we have some hope of defeating it now. I'll be praying that I don't have to get involved. It's haunting me. Wherever I go. Dr. Vaughn? It's, it's nothing. Let's end this nightmare. Let's give it our all. The exact nature of this stigma and the types of damage it is capable of are still unknown. We'll just have to open her up and observe it for ourselves. Confirmed. It's much larger than before. That must be its core there in the center. The plan is to use the laser to incinerate it, but... We can't do anything to it since the core has enveloped itself within the surrounding cellular tissue. The tissue itself looks highly viscous. Let's try draining it. 
Good job. The amount of cellular tissue around the core has decreased. Okay, then let's continue this and drag... Is this a tumor? Let's burn it with the laser. The core's been exposed. Use the laser to ins... It's working! The core's being covered by the tissue again. Please drain it. There is still tissue left inside the patient. Please drain it. Just a little more. Did it split up? The core has to be in one of them. Use the drain to find it. Let's treat the remaining cellular tissue. That was an amazing operation. Let's close her up and be finished. We were able to deal with it. Somehow. I hope this is the last time we have to perform an operation in the dark. We're finished. Great work, everyone. Sigma's mobility far exceeded our expectations. You all did a great job treating it. I'm glad you're with us. Would you expect any less from Caduceus' own special disease counteraction team? We'll hold a conference on this case of Stigma within the next few days. Of course, I'll need you to speak regarding today's operation and the patient's progress. Your report will also be forwarded to Health and Human Services, so please get started immediately. Just give me a strong cup of joe, and I'll crank it out. Good. You know, there was no way we could have anticipated Stigma's metamorphosis. I was amazed at how well you adapted. I know you have the healing touch, but even so... I guess I'm just lucky. The results from the liver exam indicate that the patient has been making satisfactory progress. She seems to be recovering well, but it's unclear how this disease was transmitted in the first place. We should continue monitoring her for at least another month. I see. Well, I think it's safe to say that the treatment was successful. How about the pathogen itself? What have we learned? And please, keep it brief, Robert. My pleasure, although our analysis is only partially complete. First, the biopsy. Stigma did not match any known organism, meaning it's a new species, so we'll have to come up with a name for it. So how about it, Dr. Everett? You'll be a grandfather one of these days. Well, my son's only 12. All he thinks about is football. Oh, well, in that case, I'll ask someone else. Now, regarding the spectral analysis, our attempts to determine its structure resulted in failure. What? How is that possible? I've never heard of that happening before. We tried a different machine, but the outcome was the same. We screened for nucleic acid, proteins, glucose, lipids, and ATP, but there were no matches. Stigma consists of an organic compound that is completely foreign to us. What? This will change the way we think about life itself. Whoever is credited with its discovery will surely make history. From a medical perspective, it's fortunate that Stigma's infectivity is weak. We're trying to culture it, but so far there's no sign of growth or multiplication. It's going to be difficult to determine the means of infection as well. 
This is more serious than we thought. Madam Director, we have an emergency. Leslie, we're in the middle of an important conference. Deputy Secretary Marshall has collapsed. He may have intraaxial hemorrhaging. George Marshall, from the Department of Homeland Security? All right, let's adjourn the conference. Leslie, I want you to prep operating room three for him. Vaughn, Blaylock, you two will be performing the procedure. You want us to operate on a high-ranking government official? I'll explain the details before the operation, so please go make the necessary preparations. It's been 35 minutes since he collapsed. He's a 9 on the coma scale with mild tachypnea. We're waiting on the CAT scan results, but it's most likely a case of subarachnoid hemorrhage. This is his chart from his previous admittance. We performed deep brain stimulation to treat his dystonia. And he was able to recover from that. Incredible. Looks like the systems produced by Columba and Cornix, the same company that made Elena's pump. Yes, it's now a subsidiary of Humani. If you have any questions about it, you can ask Isabella. Director, what's this shadow here on the X-ray? Oh, that. It's a hippocampus chip. We implanted it at his request. He didn't want to forget anything, so he opted to have his memory augmented. Huh. I assume they're keeping it quiet. Do we need to worry about being in violation of state law? We don't have time to discuss that. Now, the hematoma is far enough away from the electrodes, but take care when using the thrombolytic. Okay, we'll head over to the OR then. These are the results from the CT. Please take a look. A number of aneurysms have been detected. Some of the blood vessels have already burst and are hemorrhaging heavily inside the brain. First, we must clear the excess blood from the area. Then we need to treat the aneurysms. Remember, this is brain surgery. Please be extra careful when performing this operation. Even a tiny mistake could debilitate his brain. We better be careful. This will require extreme delicacy and dexterity. We need to do our best. All right, let's begin. Since we're operating on the brain, even the smallest mistake can be fatal. We'll have to be extremely careful. That bulge on the vein is the brain aneurysm. Let's remove it before it bursts. I'm getting the sedative ready. Please inject it direct. Let's detach it with the scalp. The aneurysm has been detected. The aneurysm has been removed. Please hold the vein. The vein has been reconnected. We are done treating this brain aneurysm. The test said there were multiple aneurysms, though. There's a chance that any of these vessels will turn into aneurysms. Have the magnification tool ready. Let's shift our viewpoint when necessary and treat the aneurysms when they appear. There it is. Let's treat it before it bursts. There's more where we're not looking. Once we treat the ones in sight, we have to quickly change our focus. Calm down for now, but his vitals aren't stabilizing. Let's wait a moment and see what happens. Doctor, please hurry! Not yet. Get all of these burst at once! Vitals are 
dropping? Stabilizing. It looks like it's finally over. We're done here. Excellent work. Columba and Cornix's brain electrodes and pump units may seem cutting edge but it won't be long before they're made available to the general public. Just like the pacemaker, Professor Wilkins had one. Why do I have this nagging feeling? Everyone who's contracted stigma has had some kind of artificial agent in their body. Even that one patient who was transferred here had Syntex Q heme blood. I was using artificial blood with my test mouse too. I wonder if there's a connection. Dr. Vaughn, can I trouble you for a moment? Of course. I wanted to check on the deputy secretary's condition. I doubt I can tell you more than you already know, ma'am. Since he was brought here promptly, cerebral ischemia was kept to a minimum. And there are no signs of severe paralysis, so we shouldn't have to worry about any after effects. We can't use the MRI, so we'll take another CAT scan tomorrow. Will you be advising on his rehab, ma'am? Yes, I will. I also need to administer a personality test. Because of his implant, he must be closely monitored. It's sad, really. He's such a talented man. Yeah, I feel sorry for the guy. But I'd like to leave him in the hands of the others so I can concentrate on stigma. Agreed. And Dr. Vaughn? It's a shame that you feel the need to keep secrets from us. But I'm hoping that will change. What makes you say that? Your cutaneous muscles seem a little more tense than normal. I'm out of practice when it comes to reading faces. Was my assessment accurate? You're a critical part of the Caduceus team. I hope you're not thinking of leaving. Of course not.
there. Do you work here? Uh, who? Me? Well, yes. Could you please take a look at my son? He's been complaining of terrible stomach pain. You brought him here? We don't accept emergencies or walk-ins. I heard this hospital is famous. And it's so big. There must be someone who can help. Well, there's no point arguing about it. I'll take a look at him. What's your son's name? Oliver. Oliver McHale. You wouldn't believe the patient I'm dealing with. He's throwing a fit because his operation isn't expensive enough. Are you serious? Yeah, his friend just had a hernia operation that cost $40,000 and he doesn't want to be outdone. He's 11 years old and filling the role of a trust fund brat perfectly. I guess it wasn't enough for him that his father pulled some strings to get him into this place. He's the son of some big shot and neither of his parents have the time to bring him here. So how much are we charging him? About $30,000. The operation will be performed in a deluxe suite. Not bad for a case of appendicitis, huh? Appendicitis? What a coincidence. I'm seeing a boy with the same condition. <gasps> Excuse me, Dr. Blaylock? Yes, Elena? I have a message from accounting. They say to transport your new patient somewhere else. It... It seems the family can't afford the treatment. Since Caduceus isn't normally open to the public, they don't know how to deal with situations like this. How much is it going to cost? Well, the family doesn't have health insurance, so at least $10,000. But transporting him now will put his life at risk. Unfortunately, money talks, even when it comes to health care. What do you think? Should I have him transferred? That's a tough decision. Um, Marcus, have you given your patient his bill yet? No, why? Do you mind if I handle it? Chandler, I mean, Mr. Forbes, about your hospital bill. The total will be $30,000. I told you that's not enough. I can't lose to someone like Jimmy. His dad's just the president of some little company. I want a premium upgrade. Bring in like 10 doctors. I'm afraid we can't do that. But there might be something else we can do. If you'd like to make a donation, we can increase your bill. How does $10,000 sound? That's it? Well, how much would the total be? Hmm. That would bring it up to $40,000. But that's the same as Jimmy's. That's still not high enough. I'm way richer than he is. Well, we could add $2,000 more and make it $42,000. 42,000. Oh, well, I guess that's okay. My daddy gives me whatever I... Oh! 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 Ow. My tummy hurts! Hurry up and fix it! We have the best room reserved for you, so let's get started. Well then, the donation will be transferred from the hospital to the Oliver McHale Fund. Elena, prep for surgery. We've got two appendixes to remove. Pretty sneaky, Val. To be honest, I'm impressed. It... it still counts as a donation, so it's not gonna cause us any problems, right? Ah, uh, it'll be fine. It's in both their best interests anyway, so it all works out. Well, let's begin the conference. The first patient, Chandler, has acute appendicitis. It appears to be in its early stages, so the operation should be fairly routine. However, the second patient, Oliver, seems to have the same condition, but in an advanced state. It looks like he's been trying to hide his symptoms. But he's only a child. We understand the situation. This is going to be two operations back to back, so let's be quick. We're going to save them both, of course. Let's get started. This boy's condition is relatively mild, isn't it? It's still too late to treat it with antibiotics. It would be best to perform an appendectomy. All right. Please begin the procedure. 
Please prepare to extract the appendix. First, inject the sedative. Next, we'll be cutting into the meso appendix. Use next, we'll tie two wires around the appendix. However, they must be tied in the appropriate places. One goes around the base of the orc. Look at where the wire needs to be. Then we're done tying the base. Now, now that both parts of the appendix have been tied, make an incision between the two wires and now that the appendix has been severed, the appendix has been successfully removed. The fix the membrane looks like our first operation was a success. Let's close them up. That went smoothly. Let's move on to our next patient. Doctor, we have a problem. Oliver's condition has worsened. What? What's his condition? He complained of severe pain and then went into shock. Don't tell me. His appendix has burst. We'll find out when we open him up. We have to hurry and get in there. The pus is causing inflammation. It's peritonitis. Treat the inflammation and drain the pus. The appendix needs to be removed as well. Begin with the sedative. This is bad. The appendix is festering. The appendix has been extracted, so we shouldn't have to worry about any more pus. I fixed the synthetic. The synthetic membrane has been affixed. Let's treat the remaining wounds. is complete and the peritonitis has been treated. Let's close him up. This boy is very lucky. If he'd waited any longer for surgery, he may not have pulled through. Well, let's close him up. Rich or poor, we're all the same under the knife. I never thought such a simple operation could put me on edge like this. I think we've all learned something from this operation. Thank you so much, Doctor. You saved my son's life. But I thought that this hospital didn't treat normal patients. Well, it was an emergency, so this was a special case. Thankfully, an anonymous donor paid for your treatment fees. I can't believe how fortunate we are. That donor must be an angel. Yes, well, please see to getting your son health insurance so he can get the medical help he needs. Okay, I, I will. Thanks again. You're welcome. Take care now. You're very good with children, Dr. Blaylock. Thanks. I did some volunteer work at an orphanage. How about you, Marcus? Who are the lucky beneficiaries of your time? I didn't do any volunteer work. Really? I thought that was a requirement for all doctors. He's so self-centered. Drives me crazy. I haven't heard from him in I don't know how long, and now he's telling me to come to Philadelphia? He's got some nerve. It's like he thinks we're still dating. That's just his personality. It can't be helped. Besides, you already said yes, right? You're not on call, so why not? Think of it as a little vacation. A chance to reminisce about your college days. 
How stupid of me. When I heard that he'd found a new type of parasite, I agreed to go without thinking. <sighs> that reminds me. How are things between you and Ray? It ended when he went back home. Oh, sorry. I shouldn't have brought it up. Oh, it's all right. If you're so worried about this trip, then why don't you bring Dr. Vaughn along? He has some time off too, doesn't he? Uh, I, I don't know if that would be such a good idea. I'm sure he wants to get some rest. I think he'd be interested in going. It sounds like a fascinating discovery. You think so? Thanks, but I'll pass. Philadelphia's too far. It'd be a waste of my vacation. Besides, Robert finished his report on stigma, and I'd like to review it. Oh, come on. Don't be that way. This information will be useful for you. If it was that important, Caduceus would be all over it. A parasite isn't going to help us understand stigma any better. I have no interest in a new variety of hookworm. You're going to drive all the way to Philadelphia? That's the plan. That sounds like fun. I haven't been on a road trip in a long time. Really? Then would you like to come along? Are you sure it's okay? Of course. The more the merrier. I'll tell Denny it's a field trip for Caduceus Special Disease Counteraction Team. Hey, I didn't say I was going. What are you talking about? This is a team effort. I won't take no for an answer. We're all going to Philadelphia this weekend. an interesting operation, wasn't it? I suppose. It would have been a lot more interesting, though, if the operation hadn't been performed on a dog. Oh, don't be so cranky, Marcus. How was I supposed to know that Denny decided to become a veterinarian? He tried to be a nice host, right? Even if he didn't exactly succeed. Look at that guy. He's, he's driving like a maniac. I hope he gets pulled over. Well, I thought it was worth the trip. Really? Me too. I'm sure what we learned will come in handy someday. Yeah, like if we ever have to save a celebrity's pampered pooch. I never should have let you talk me into this. All right, I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking straight. I mean, how would you feel if your college ex called you out of nowhere? I totally understand. Just ignore him, Dr. Blaylock. Hey, what's with that police car? Hmm? There's been an accident. Stop the car. Today's just not my day. It's worse than I thought. Someone was thrown from the car. It seems he was the only one inside. He's breathing, but he's unconscious. The wounds on his chest are pretty bad. He's not looking so great. I brought a set of instruments. Let's get ready. We're going to operate here? We'll just perform first aid. He may be suffering from damage to his internal organs. Well, this has turned out to be one hell of a road trip. We need to provide first aid. He appears to have sustained serious blunt trauma to the chest. We need to treat these external wounds first. We've treated his external wounds, but his vitals aren't stabilizing. There's probably some internal bleeding. Please open him up. This doesn't look good. Please, use the antibiotic gel before the hemorrhaging worsens. That was the worst one. Let's treat the other wounds now. His vitals still aren't stabilizing. We must have missed something. We'll have to use the magnification tool. We've treated all the wounds. 
but his vitals still haven't... Doctor, the shadow has disappeared. Doctor, something's wrong. Keep looking. The patient's vitals... There may be other pockets of blood. Keep searching. Vitals are stabilizing. He should be all right now. Okay, let's close him up. If we hadn't decided to operate, he never would have made it. Well done, you guys. I'm done transferring him. Well, we at least accomplished something worthwhile on this trip. Yeah, he's one lucky guy. How many officers can say they've received roadside surgery? You wanted to see us? Yes. I have a favor to ask of you two. Please, have a seat. I don't like where this is headed. Would you mind watching this video? In these times of skyrocketing medical costs, there remains a ray of hope for those in need. Only one doctor provides life-saving surgery free of charge. This is wish come true, Miracle Surgery. We're back again tonight to continue our surprising medical documentary. Welcome to wish come true, Miracle Surgery. I'm your host, Guy Davidson. Tonight, we have a heart-wrenching story for you. Now, let's bring in our hospital's director, Dr. Leonardo Bello. Hello, everyone, and good evening. My question for you tonight is, are you living healthy lives? Thanks for being with us, Leo. Let me compliment you on your work last week. It was inspirational. <laughs> Thanks, guy. But it's the patient who's the true hero. I'm pleased to report that Mr. Ellis is well on the road to recovery. I've heard of this show. It's on primetime TV, right? Yes. They agree to cover all the medical bills, and in return, they broadcast the entire procedure. Ethically, I have some concerns about the show, but I hear it's rather popular. Seems like a complete farce to me. So what does this have to do with us? Keep watching. You'll see. By the way, Leo, you seemed a bit angry when you arrived at the studio today. Actually, I was. Allow me to tell you why. As our viewers know, this program has brought to light many serious issues with our healthcare system. But I recently learned something even more disturbing. $300 million of our country's annual budget goes to Caduceus. Personally, that disgusts me. What's wrong with our medical administration? Where's the money going? I haven't heard any reports that would justify such an outrageous budget. Research only gets us so far. What about the thousands of patients who aren't receiving medical care? The future of this country's health care looks gloomy indeed. I suspect the members of that organization are growing rich 
while the taxpayers are footing the bill. I doubt they're courageous enough to operate under the scrutiny of the public eye. You said it, Leo. Please stay tuned. We'll introduce today's patient following the commercial break. Say goodbye to your medical worries and hello to Miracle Surgery. What was that all about? They don't have the slightest clue what we do here. They've publicly tarnished our reputation. Obviously, their claims are completely unfounded. Let them say what they want. They'll eat their words eventually. I agree, but the higher-ups are outraged about it. We received orders from the Secretary of Health and Welfare to crush them. Crush them? Yes. They want someone to make an appearance on the show. That's why you wanted to see us? So you actually agreed to it? We had no choice. Besides, someone has to do it. We can't just pretend like it never happened. I can't believe that you two will be appearing on Miracle Surgery! Well, I wouldn't bet on it. One of the conditions is that if we win, they take the show off the air. Well, that's a pity. With your skills, I highly doubt you'll lose. I'm a little more skeptical. My, isn't that a little cold, Dr. Suji? Oh, don't get me wrong. I'll be rooting for you both. But with Leonardo Bello as your opponent, it won't be an easy victory. You know him? Yes. He was well known at the medical school I attended. It may seem like he's all talk, but he's a skilled doctor. In these times of skyrocketing medical costs, there remains a ray of hope for those in need. Only one doctor provides life-saving surgery free of charge. This is Wish Come True Miracle Surgery. Good evening, folks. I'm your host, Guy Davidson. I'm sure you've all seen the previews for tonight's show. So let me introduce our surprise guests. From Caduceus, one of our country's best-funded medical institutions. Please welcome Dr. Vaughn and Dr. Playlock. Good evening. It's nice to be here. Hey. Let's start off with a simple question. What made you decide to appear on this show? Unfortunately, there have been a number of rumors perpetuated by this program. So, we're here to clear things up. Caduceus conducts useful research and provides unparalleled treatment. In fact, our research is the future of medicine. Why? You seem a bit defensive. What do you have to say in response, Dr. Bello? It's not the future I'm concerned with, it's the present. And if my criticism will force you to improve, then it will have served its purpose. Now, let the lesson begin. That's our Leo, a straight shooter. Well then, let's introduce this evening's patient. Enrique Alvarez is suffering from a very troublesome tumor. And unfortunately, he also has complications with his heart and lungs. This has made operating on him difficult. And that is why he has come seeking help on this show. Mr. Alvarez, is there anything you'd like to say? I'm incredibly grateful that this show has given me a chance to get some treatment. There were times when I got really down, but now I have hope. It's just that... It's just what? I'm a fan of Dr. Bello, so I was hoping he was going to operate on me. I'm sorry to hear that, Enrique, but there's no need to worry. If anything even slightly out of the ordinary happens, I'll take over. So please, let them proceed with the operation. Really? Great! Well, that makes me feel a lot better. Don't worry, Mr. Alvarez. You're in good hands. This isn't exactly the place for it, but let's begin the briefing. Like the host said, the objective of this operation will be to extract tumors from the stomach. 
The patient also has arrhythmia, so we'll need to be careful. Got it. We'll perform this operation flawlessly. It's finally begun! The miraculous, life-changing operation is upon us! Will they save the patient? Will they prove their skill and determination? Will that guy ever shut up? Just ignore the glitz and stay calm. Let's prove ourselves out there. The abilities of Caduceus's best and brightest will soon be laid bare for all to see. Are they skilled surgeons or just government-funded slackers? We're all here to witness the truth. Is he gonna shut up and let us operate? Let's handle this like we always do, Val. Just concentrate on the patient. He's right. Please begin the operation. Here we go! Are you ready for some surgery? According to the preliminary examinations, it should be around here. Oh, let's get a close-up of this. Ah, they're about to extract it. They're going to... The tumor is being carried out on a stainless steel tray. aren't stabilizing. There must be another tumor. Let's take a look with the magnification tool. Hey now, the Caduceus team has suddenly picked up the pain. What? Where's all this blood coming from? It's coming from somewhere else. Let's use the magnification tool to find the source. Hey, what's this? Looks like they found something. They've discovered more tumors. Caduceus's troop the imaging is in stock. That takes care of one tumor, but there may be others. The bleeding won't stop until we take care of all these tumors. His white cell count has jumped. Are these tumors multiplying somewhere? We need the to re-examine the areas we've already treated. Not yet. The hemorrhaging severe. Hand me the drain, please. What? You must be kidding me. The drain's not working. Is it broken? Hurry and get a replacement. We'll manage for the time being. Equipment malfunction? Get it together, Caduceus! Here's a new drain. Huh? The EKG is showing an irregularity. Doctor, fibrillation may occur. His heart's fibrillating. Stop operating! The Flat patient's line. vitals. The patient's undergoing cardiac arrest. I'll get the defibrillator ready and... It'll be faster if we do it by hand. We have a pulse. Talk about heart-pounding action. What a surprising turn of events. But this surgery isn't over yet. The audience will settle for no less than the best from them. I'd love to suture that fool's mouth shut.
other tumors. Let's close them up and get this circus over with. There were some stumbles along the way, but it looks like our guests have safely finished the operation. Just close them up and we'll be done. Did the surgeons from Caduceus perform, everyone? I'm anxious to hear Dr. Bellow's thoughts. We'll hear from him after the break. Well, Dr. Bellow, how did they do? First, I'd like to congratulate Mr. Alvarez on a successful operation. But as I suspected, I should have been the one to perform the procedure. What do you mean by that? I would have been able to complete the operation in three quarters of the time, reducing the amount of bleeding. If this is the best they can do, <laughs> then I'm rather disappointed. What? Guy? Why don't we settle this once and for all? Let's invite two patients with the same condition onto the show and do their surgeries simultaneously. Then the difference in skill will be obvious. Leo, that's a fantastic idea. Of course, it depends on whether or not our guest surgeons are up for the challenge. Of course we are. We accept. We'll show you who's more talented. You completely fell for their trap, pal. It's been a mess here because of your rash response, Valerie. I'm sorry. I don't know what came over me. Aren't you being a little unfair? She didn't want to go on TV in the first place. It's not her fault this happened. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. Now wait a minute. The situation is not as bad as it may seem. If they can win the competition, then we won't have anything to worry about. I have faith in them. Why are we treating surgery like a competitive sport? I'm sorry, Marcus, Valerie. I should have objected to this more strongly. I feel responsible for the entire situation. But now that it's come to this, I have to ask you to appear on the show one more time. I promise you, that will be the end of it. We'll be all right. We'll finish this once and for all. Take these artificial veins with you. The endothelialized cells are perfect for the operation. Ordinarily, they'd take a month to produce but our technology lets us make them in 10 days. They're made of special material which is easy to suture with and prevents the formation of thrombi. We only recently gained approval to use them. I understand, Robert. Thanks. Our patient is suffering from an aneurysm, but still, having these will be reassuring. I'm sorry, Valerie, but this is a good opportunity to sway public opinion in our favor. Maybe so, but I'd rather be researching stigma. I'll be presenting a report on that in the near future, incidentally. Well then, Valerie, Marcus, good luck to you two. The time has finally come. The moment of truth. For the first time on national television, not just one, but two operations will be broadcast live. Our very own Dr. Leonardo Bello will be competing against Team Caduceus. As we near the start of the competition, what's going through your head, Leo? A beautiful operation is performed quickly, as I intend to demonstrate. I assure you, our viewers are in for quite a surprise. Did you hear that, ladies and gentlemen? Don't go anywhere! You don't want to miss this! Now, let's check in with Team Caduceus. 
I must say, you look really determined today. Our only concern is the welfare of the patient. Nothing more, nothing less. We're calm and focused. We're concentrating on the procedure, not worrying about the competition. It seems Team Caduceus has their eye on the ball. Anyway, I hope they'll perform an amazing operation for us. Each of today's patients suffers from aneurysms in their large intestine. This is an unprecedented opportunity to see America's best doctors live in action. Even though our patients are in good hands, we do have an emergency team on standby. However, I doubt they'll be needed. Well, the time has come. Teams, please prep for surgery! Well, let's begin the conference. This will be an operation on an aneurysm, so the basic treatment will be to excise the bulge. But according to the diagnosis, there seems to be another aneurysm lurking there too. Let's use this opportunity to implant the synthetic vein while dealing with the aneurysms. Got it. Are you okay, Val? I yes I'm fine. Concentrate. Stay calm. This amazing, unprecedented surgical showdown begins now. Who will reign supreme? You can't let your eyes miss even the slightest moment of this competition. This guy isn't helping, is he? Stay calm, everyone. Let's start the operation. Well, here we go. Let's all do our best. I'm confirming the presence of an aneurysm. It's possible that another may form where we're not looking, so be careful. Please inject the sedative into the bulge. The sedative has taken effect now. You please drain the... Use the force... Now suture the... Looks good. But there are indications that another aneurysm may develop. Continue with the operation, Doctor. But be careful. What? This aneurysm! It's huge! Still, the procedure to extract it will be the same as with any normal aneurysm. First, inject the sedative. The sedative won't last long since it's... The aneurysm has been exa... Please take care of the bleeding. The blood has been drained. Next, we will reconnect the blood vessel using the synthetic vein. Place the synthetic vein between the ends of the real vein. Twist your hand to find the right angle. Now, suture... Now suture the other end the same way. The synthetic vein has been sutured into place. Treatment of the large aneurysm is now complete. Whoa! Did you see that? That was amazing, Dr. Bello! There's a lot of cheering going on from that side. What's happening over there? Must be that surprise he mentioned. Just ignore it. Stay focused. Concentrate. There seems to be an aneurysm outside of our view. Use the magnification tool and treat it. The sedative is worn off. Please give the patient another injection. Doctor, another aneurysm is forming. Please, hurry up and treat it. Sedatives worn off. Please inject some more. The patient's vitals. I'll stop it. Yeah. <laughs> 
vitals are stable. I think we're finished. Please close up the patient. We're done with the operation. Great work, team. Congratulations on a successful procedure! That was fantastic work! Thank you. I'm glad it went smoothly. I too am relieved that you were able to complete the operation. But you had me worried there for a while, since it was taking so long. Dr. Bello, you're already finished? That can't be. We completed our operation so fast. Let's take a moment to review some highlights from Dr. Bellow's operation. He has the healing touch. Incredible. That's my trademark. I have the ability to block out all distractions. I wanted to serve a piece of humble pie to all those arrogant doctors out there. Very impressive. Now, the judging is underway backstage by an independent medical panel. Who will emerge victorious from this historic battle? We're leaving, Valerie. But... We're in hostile territory. There's no reason for us to stick around, no matter what the results are. Let's not give them another opportunity to criticize us. You're right, Marcus. Let's go. The results are in. The doctor, selected as America's finest, is... Dr. Leonardo Bello! Elena, you forgot to sterilize operating room three. Oh, sorry. I'll do it right away. Jeez, what's gotten into you? I know you're upset about losing the competition, but you have to get over it. You're bringing everyone down. Where are the doctors? The director asked to see them. Yikes, that doesn't sound good. In these times of skyrocketing medical costs, there remains a ray of hope for those in need. Only one doctor provides life-saving surgery free of charge. This is wish come true, miracle surgery. How can you stand to watch that? I'm not watching it because I want to. Is it your penance for the fiasco? The Secretary of Health and Welfare is furious, but that's to be expected. However, no one is blaming you two, since you performed a flawless operation. I called you here for another reason. Take a look at this. A letter? How old-fashioned. Dear Caduceus staff, congratulations on your recent appearance on Miracle Surgery. Seeing you perform that operation on national television really inspired me. That's why I believe it's now my turn to make an appearance. Is this guy a doctor trying to promote himself, or is this another challenge? Keep reading. I'm afraid it's more serious than that. What you encountered at Concordia was care, the hand. And in Maryland you received Soma, the body. But now I shall reveal Ops, the eye, for the entire country to witness. I assure you it will be something to behold. The miracle of modern times, stigma. He knows about stigma? It appears so. That's why I couldn't just ignore this. Is he the one who created it? Is he the one who kidnapped Professor Wilkins? We've contacted the producers of Miracle Surgery, but they're not taking the threat seriously. Now, the affected area is about to be exposed. Wait, 
This isn't an ulcer. What the... What is this? I... I just need to use my healing touch. No! I can't keep up with it! It's a new type of stigma. Bello can't handle this. Even with his skills, he doesn't know how to deal with it. Let's go, Marcus. Ma'am, please contact the studio and order them to suspend the operation immediately. Elaine is coming with us. <sighs> what is this focus? My, my healing touch. Healing touch. Leo? Leo, are you all right? I can't any more. <sighs> Leo! Leo! Pull yourself together! You, you have to finish the operation! Step aside. We'll complete the operation. He pushed himself too hard. I guess he doesn't know his own limit. Make sure you take good care of him. The patient's already been opened up, but her vitals are stable. Whoever wrote that letter called this stigma Ops, which means I or something, right? I do see something that looks like an eye, but I have no idea what its function is. Did you notice anything while Dr. Bella was operating? There was some sort of reaction at the core, but it seemed like it needed energy. I haven't seen anything like it before. So the key to this operation is to not activate the core. Team Caduceus has suddenly burst into the operating room here at Miracle Surgery. Will they save face from their defeat the other day? Will they get their revenge on Dr. Bello? There's only one thing we can do. We have to pray that they can perform a miracle. Revenge has nothing to do with this. We're here because there's a patient in need. That's right. This is what Caduceus does. Now, let's save a life. Team Caduceus is about to take over the operation that struck down even our own Dr. Leonardo Bello. That stupid announcer lost his cool for a minute, but it looks like he's back to his annoying self. This is a new strain of stigma. Please, be careful. So this is Ops. The tissue covers a wide area, but we should focus on removing the central core. We should be able to burn it with the laser. Let's begin. It discharged something. Elaine, there are no problems with the drain this time. Keep it up. It's releasing something larger. Burn it with a laser. Oh, no! A miss the discharge has been incinerated. Continue the treatment. Everyone watching at home, I implore you to pray for the patient and these young doctors. Out, Caduceus! Not yet. Look at that! A healing touch that beats even Dr. Bellow's magic fingers! The core has been incinerated. Now, for the next one. has been incinerated. Oh, oh! Awesome! Marvelous! Fantastic! Team Caduceus has successfully driven out the unknown pathogen. It's... It's over. Well, we must have put on one hell of a show. I'm glad we were able to save this person. Please put your hands together for the heroes who saved another precious life on Miracle Surgery!
It's a miracle, folks! We've just witnessed a true miracle! Two new stars have been born right before our very... Give me that mic. Ladies and gentlemen, what you saw today is a new intractable disease known as stigma. It's a serious disease that's still a mystery to us. But Caduceus has been researching potential countermeasures. And because of that, we were able to save this patient's life. That's part of our mission at Caduceus. I think it's important for the public to understand what our organization is all about. I believe that those of us in the medical field have two major responsibilities. One is to help patients with existing conditions. The other is to arm ourselves against new diseases that may arise. So in other words, Caduceus is fighting for all of our futures. Valerie, why don't you start wrapping it up? Every doctor is a part of this fight, so please, consult your local physician if you experience any unusual symptoms. And if necessary, feel free to contact us as well. That's all I have to say. We at Caduceus hope to continue serving you. Oh, and by the way, this will be the last episode of Miracle Surgery. Good night. This is Mr. Nilsson, the president of Humani. Nice to meet you. The pleasure is all mine. I saw you on Miracle Surgery. The two of you are quite talented. As a leader in the field of medicine, I was deeply moved by your speech. You're giving us more credit than we deserve. We couldn't have done it without Cynthia and Isabella's help. Oh, don't be silly. It is we who are indebted to you. Because of your television appearance, our products have gained greater exposure. So, are you here to show us your latest product? <laughs> no, no, nothing of the sort. I stopped by simply to express my gratitude. Are there any hockey fans in the room? How do box seats sound? <laughs> nice check! Get back on the offensive! We can't let them dominate the park! Being from Alaska, you must be a Pukox fan, huh, Dr. Vaughn? Uh, actually, I was only there for a brief stint, so... Care for some crab cakes? They're a specialty here. I'll pass. Thanks, though. Valerie, Elena, how about you two? Sure, I'll try one. Thanks. Oh, they look delicious. Thank you. I heard you all worked for Concordia in L.A. before you came here. You must be worried about Professor Wilkins. We were transferred to Caduceus because of that incident. Unfortunately, he's still missing. Has there been any progress in the investigation? They believe the professor's disappearance is related to stigma. That letter we received was pretty creepy. Who was it from? The FBI is trying to find out, but so far no clues. He taunted us with his pathetic dribble. Even a chimpanzee could write a better letter. A chimpanzee, huh? That's rather harsh. Oh, no! Not another offsides! Cynthia, please do whatever you can to assist our associates with their stigma research. Yes, sir. Oh, that was brutal! Did, did you see that? He hit him so hard his stick broke! Who was that? It wasn't the hammer, was it? Sounds like he's groaning. Yeah, looks like he hurt his elbow. I can't just sit here. I have to do something. Dr. Vaughn, Dr. Blaylock, would you come with me, please? Where are we going? The promoter is a friend of mine. I'd like to introduce you to him. He'd be thrilled to meet two of our country's finest doctors. Our patient, Mr. Gunderson, seems quite agitated. He said that he'll let us decide whether to use a general or a local anesthetic. Hmm. I wonder if our anesthetic will even affect him if he's that worked up. Perhaps you could try using this. It's a powerful new anesthetic our company developed. It has a much smaller risk of side effects and allergic reactions than others currently on the market. 
Is this anesthesia still being tested? <laughs> Good heavens, no. It's already been approved. It just hasn't been used much yet, so it's not very well known. I'd be thankful if it attracted some attention after being used on a sports celebrity like this. Well then, we'll try out the anesthetic from your company. About the patient. His elbow ligament is torn, and a fragment of a hockey stick is lodged in his biceps brachii. It's a wonder that he doesn't seem to be in much pain with a wound like that. The objectives in this operation are to reconnect the ligaments and remove the fragment. I'm counting on you all. Begin the operation. Let's begin the procedure. The anesthesia seems to be working well. Please begin by treating the external wounds. All external wounds have been treated. Next, we need to make an incision and treat the torn ligaments in his elbow. The ligament's completely torn, and that stick fragment's embedded pretty deep. It's completely penetrated the muscle, so we need to extract it carefully. In order to treat the ligament, we will first connect the torn ligaments with the forceps and then suture them together. Keep that in mind during the operation. All right, please continue with the operation. Pull it out and place it in the, the stick fragment. Huh? What's going on? The ligaments need to be... What would cause this sudden convulsing? I... I don't know. There wasn't anything in his charts that would have suggested this. But... But we don't have a choice. We have to continue. Just be careful. You'll have to wait for the muscle to stop con You've con You're doing here. Doc, you've connected all the torn ligaments. Let's wait until the convulsing subsides. Those convulsions were really strong. Temporarily halt the procedure if you notice any more muscle spasms. This ligament has two ligaments. The ligaments have been connected. The stick fragment has been removed, and the wound it created has been treated. It seems the patient's convulsions have subsided. So let's try to finish up here. Okay, let's close him up. I'll make a note about the muscle spasms that occurred during the operation, and we should receive a more detailed report from the lab in the next few days. Could the convulsions have been caused by the new anesthetic? We can't rule out anything at this point. Well, we're finished here. Nice job. It'll take about six months for you to fully recover. Your elbow was in pretty bad shape. I'm sure you'll heal fast, though, Mr. Thor the Hammer Gunderson. Ugh! Six months? I'll miss the rest of the season! Are you experiencing any discomfort? Do you have any numbness from the anesthesia? Well, my elbow's all jacked up. But other than that, I feel great! You feel great? <laughs> yeah, I beat the snot out of Woodman in my dreams. Wait till I get my hands on him for real. He's gonna be D.O.A. <laughs> we should report this to President Nilsson. He should know that there's a high probability the new anesthesia may not work if the patient's excited. After careful analysis, we have discovered two unique characteristics of stigma. First, its genetic information is stored in a film-like architecture. That alone differentiates it from organisms such as ourselves, whose genetic code is stored in chains. So it's like a two-dimensional barcode then? As opposed to a regular barcode, which only stores information linearly? The other unique characteristic is that it requires a special type of metal for growth. It only requires a minuscule amount, but without it, stigma cannot survive. I wish I could say the discovery was mine. 
but it's Cynthia who deserves the credit. It was her keen insight that led to the breakthrough. And exactly what type of metal are you referring to? Oh, I beg your pardon. It's a rare alloy known as collurium. It has attracted considerable attention as of late. That explains it. Explains what, Marcus? Oh, nothing. I was just surprised to hear that, that's all. Collurium is used in various fields, but primarily the medical industry. Although it's only been in use for 10 years, there are already numerous applications. Electrodes, as an ingredient in medicine, the synthetic heme for artificial blood. It's used in cutting-edge medical technology, to be certain. I can't believe Kanai is missing an important conference like this. If it was me who wasn't here, I'd never hear the end of it. Oh, I'm being paged. If you'll excuse me, ma'am. Let's go, Val. I'll fill you in later on anything important you miss. What's the situation, Elena? There's been an accident. I think one of the patients is Dr. Tsuji. What? Can I? One of the two patients being transferred here is in serious condition. He sustained multiple injuries and will probably require an emergency operation. I'm sorry. I can't believe my stupid cousin. It's all right, Kanai. Just take it easy. Seems like you may have sprained your neck. Let's have Dr. Everett take a look. I'm sorry, Marcus. I should be the one operating on my cousin. What are you talking about? Look at the condition you're in. I said some harsh things to Kashiro this morning, so he must have been distracted, and... it... it's all my fault. Don't worry, your cousin will be fine. It's unlike you to fall apart at the seams. Yeah, you're right. Marcus, Valerie, take good care of Kashiro for me, all right? The patient is a 31-year-old Asian male who was injured in a car accident. He sustained several internal injuries, including a burst liver. And we suspect he has a massive amount of internal bleeding. We won't know for sure until we take a look inside. But depending on the patient's condition, we may need to focus on keeping his vitals up first. I agree. We should treat the area and stop the hemorrhaging. Then we can wait and see what happens. The objective of this operation is to treat the damaged liver. Let's do our best. Okay, let's get started. Let's begin the procedure. As I explained before, we expect there to be large amounts of hemorrhaging inside his body cavity. Be aware of the patient's vitals at all times during the operation. Okay, please open him up. As we expected, the hemorrhaging is quite severe. First, Let's drain this blood and assess the situation. The patient's undergoing cardiac arrest. I'll ready the defibrillator. We have a pulse. But in this condition, he won't last very long if we continue. You're right. We should wait until he's recovered a bit before we begin the main procedure. Let's treat the bleeding and the less severe injuries to control the damage. We'll also seal the injuries to the liver with synthetic membranes to keep it from getting worse. Okay, begin by draining the blood. If there's this much hemorrhaging, let's get the less severe injury. Let's treat it. This injury appears to be causing the severe hemorrhaging. Let's seal it by... There's an irregularity on the EKG. Doctor, please. We're done treating the lesser injury. His heart is fibrillating. The patient's undergoing cardiac arrest. Use the defibrillator to resuscitate. We have a pulse. Please keep an eye on his vitals as well. The EKG is showing an irregularity. Monitor his pulse. He's fibrillating. I'll prepare the defibrillator. He's undergoing cardiac arrest. He has a pulse. Continue. It's hemorrhaging again. Drain the blood and slowly sealing it will reduce the... You're halfway done, Doctor. 
We're almost that the hemorrhaging from the injured area has been treated. Let's secure the membranes with the antibiotic gel. The injury has been completely sealed by the synthetic membranes. Close him up for now. We'll treat the rest of his injuries at another time. Please close him up. Let's wait for the patient's condition to improve before we continue treating him. Great work, everyone. There was severe bleeding, so we had to pack the liver. It's possible he'll need another operation. We'll have to monitor his progress. It was fortunate that Kanae didn't sustain any serious injuries. From what Justin told me, it won't be long before she can return to work. I hope she isn't straining herself. And also, I received a call from the FBI regarding Professor Wilkins' case. Any leads? They want to run background checks on all the professor's personal and professional contacts. They must be feeling the heat now that the public knows about stigma. I'm concerned, though, about how the kidnappers may react. Well, hopefully they'll be behind bars soon. I read Cynthia's report, and needless to say, I was shocked by what she's discovered. Calorium is the cause of stigma? It's a factor, sir, not the cause. Try telling that to our customers. All they care about is whether or not it's a health risk. Many of our products use calorium. Without it, our subsidiary, Columba and Cornix, would be out of business. This kind of information could destroy our reputation. Hold on, just calm down. The problem here is not calorium. Nor is it stigma, since it's actually not very contagious. It's those who are using stigma as a biological weapon that we should be worried about. We must educate the public to avoid a panic. Yes, I see your point. But we have no idea who's behind all this. Anyway, I'll immediately allocate more resources to stigma research. Humani's reputation must be maintained. His vitals are stable, but the test results don't look good. The blood gas analysis shows negative base excess. The ALT and AST values are high, too. Just as I thought. A follow-up operation is required. You're gonna cut open my stomach again? We weren't able to remove all of the damage to your liver. It would be dangerous to leave it. Doctor, I'm used to dying on screen. But I'm not ready to die for real. That's right. Kanaya told us how you learned karate and became an actor. So far, I've only gotten in supporting roles, but still, it's taken a lot of hard work. I'm sure it has. Karate is more than just kicks and punches, right? Yeah, it requires mental discipline too. Then show me some of that mental discipline during the operation, okay? If a patient maintains a strong will, then his body will respond likewise. The rest is up to us. Trust me, you'll be back on the set in no time, ready to be a leading man. I'll do my best. The patient's condition has worsened. We need to figure out why. You're right. Kanai must be so worried. Let's get him stabilized. We are going to be operating on the same area we did last time. We need to review our treatment of his injuries from the last operation and find out what's wrong now. We'll determine how to proceed further during the operation itself. Now let's all do our best. Let's begin the operation. Let's find out why the patient's condition has deteriorated. Please disinfect the area and open him up. This can't be! All the synthetic membranes we applied to seal the wound are gone. Let's drain the blood. 
We can't investigate with it in the way. There's no doubt that this injury is the source of the hemorrhaging. The question is, why did he get so much worse? There must be another reason for this around here. We'll have to investigate it again while reapplying the synthetic membranes. Use the ultrasound and internal hemorrhage. This must be what caused his hem... Let's suture it before it hem... There's so much... There may be other internal hemorrhages nearby as well. Let's find and treat them. The area's hemorrhaging again. Drain the blood and apply a synthetic membrane. Remember, that's the first one. We are halfway done. This is the hemorrhaging from the injured area has stopped, and his vitals are stabilizing. Please apply the antibiotic gel. The synthetic membranes have been affixed. We'll save the main treatment for another day and close them up for now. Please close him up. We were able to determine the reason for his poor condition without complications. But we'll have to wait for him to get stronger before we can perform the rest of the treatment. Are you sure this is the right way, Dr. Vaughn? Hold on, we just turned onto 7th, so... Yeah, this is right, I think. You have all the coronary arteries memorized, but you can't remember simple directions. It's nice of Kanai to treat us to dinner, but I wonder if we'll make it in time. Well, I doubt we'll get another offer like this from her again. Um, Dr. Vaughn, it seems kind of dark this way. This can't be right. Yeah, I'll turn right at the next intersection. That should take us to... Uh. You three, don't make a sound. If you want to live, then do as I say. Now, get inside that car. We'll give you all our money if you just let us go. <laughs> Sorry, but it ain't your wallets we're after. Now hurry up and get in. No! Someone help! Please! Elena! Didn't I tell you to be quiet? What did you just do? These days, anesthesia can be administered via pen injectors. Pretty handy, wouldn't you say? What do you want from us? Let's save that for later, shall we? Sweet dreams. Dr. Vaughn! Marcus! <sighs> Where am I? Are you alright, Marcus? Dr. Vaughn! Val, Elena... That's right, we've been kidnapped. Are you two okay? Well, they haven't treated us too badly. Yeah, but take a look around. An operating table. I can guess why we were brought here. But are they gonna keep us locked up in this room? So nap time's over, huh? What, too ugly to show your face? Who are you? What do you want? You're in no position to be asking questions. Just keep quiet and do whatever operations we need. That's why you have us locked in this room? There's only one thing you need to know. You belong to Kidman now. And you're gonna help us research stigma, like it or not. Nice little business you got here. So you're the ones who are responsible for stigma? 
Your first patient is ready. Treat her. We aren't your slaves. And what if I refuse? If you want to ignore the patient, then go right ahead. You'll only be hurting yourselves. You see, every time you fail an operation, your food rations will be reduced. And if you make the boss angry, well then, your worries will soon be over. Make your decision. I'll be back shortly. So, we're gonna play along, right? Let's just think about the patient for now. I think that's the only thing we can do. I don't suppose we should hope for a miraculous rescue, huh? Should we start digging our way out then? Hey, Marcus. Do you think they're the ones who kidnapped Professor Wilkins? In all likelihood, yes. How else could they know so much? Then, is the professor... I hope he's all right. <laughs> Here are your scrubs. Hurry up and change. You again. Hey, don't get any ideas, or I'll let my buddies in here to play with you. Why are you doing this? Hmm, wouldn't you like to know? But I should thank you. Because of you, I can buy myself a new car. I hope you drive yourself off a cliff. This stigma is called onyx, the claw that tears its prey. It's living quietly in the host's pancreas, and it's about to reach maturity. Hang in there. We'll save you. You expect us to operate without proper sterilization? Just do it. Marcus. We've got no choice. If it becomes infected, we'll deal with it later. I... I can't believe this. Neither can I. But we have to focus on treating the patient. Now, what does the chart say? Let's see. The affected area is the pancreas, and the stigma is called onyx. Inflammation markers fluctuate over time. The numbers vary wildly beyond normal ranges. This is ridiculous. That data doesn't provide any help at all. But if it's accurate, then the stigma's appearing and disappearing over time. This data is too unreliable to determine a treatment plan from it. Oh, I almost forgot. Use this serum. What do we need a serum for? For this operation. Just use it like you're told. So then, this strain of stigma has to be treated with a particular serum. That's good to know. At least we won't be entering this operation completely blind. The claw, huh? Let's begin. This is hardly the ideal location, but we have no choice. An unknown pathogen and a mystery medication. Nothing's normal about this situation. We need to get a look inside her first. Let's see what this claw they keep boasting about is. We can't confirm anything that appears to be a stigma-like pathogen. It's highly possible that it's hiding somewhere nearby. Let's use the ultrasound to follow it. So this is Onyx. Inject it with a serum. Onyx has gone into hiding again. Track it down with the ultrasound. It's hiding again. Something's different about it now. There are multiple reactions on the ultrasound? What's going on? It's making copies of... We'll find it, no matter how many times it tries to hide. It's working. Don't be fooled by the fakes. Let's finish this thing off. How's that? The onyx has disappeared! We did it! There are no remaining wounds. Let's close her up. Let's hurry up and finish this operation. I hate being their accomplice. 
but at least it's over. We saved the patient. Let's just leave it at that. Yes. I'm glad we got through that. Great work. They expect us to sleep in here? You must be joking. Well, they won't break us, no matter how hard they try. I know it won't be easy, but let's try to keep our cool. This may not be the Ritz, but we should try to get some rest. Yeah, you're right. Good night, Dr. Vaughn. Dr. Blaylock. Good night, Elena. So the operation was a slam dunk, huh? Excellent. Looks like they've earned their keep. So, when will the next patient be ready? We estimate that the patient will begin exhibiting symptoms in approximately one week. <laughs> I can't wait. They've ignored us for three days now. What's going on? We have no reason to believe that a rescue team is on its way, and there's been no talk of a ransom. I hate to say this, but the situation looks grim. Then, should we start planning an escape? We could use our scalpels as weapons, but the risk is too high. I don't think we should. It's better to wait a little while longer and see what their next move is. Was that a gunshot? I'm scared. Scrap the scalpel idea. Let's use anesthesia to knock him out. But first, we need the key to this room. Get in there! <coughs> What's going on here? Save him or let him die. I don't care either way. He's nothing but a traitor to us. This is a shotgun wound. Please, help me! <laughs> Serves you right, pal. See what a mess you got yourself into? I did what I was hired to do, so... so I thought I'd split. What a fool. You know the rules. He's bleeding profusely. He needs a transfusion. We need blood. Artificial is fine. So you're gonna operate on him? You must be crazy. I'll get you the blood, but you'll owe me. He's coughing up blood and suffering from dyspnea. It's likely there's a pellet in his lungs. We're in a race against time. Wait a second. We don't have any stabilizer. What? All we have left is a small amount of antibiotic gel. No. We can't perform an operation like this. <sighs> we don't have a choice. He won't survive unless we operate. Now. Yes. As long as we still call ourselves doctors. We can't just leave him to die. Uh, understood. Then please, treat the external wounds and extract the shotgun pellet lodged inside his body. There isn't any stabilizer, so please be careful of the patient's vitals during the operation. Beginning the operation. From looking at the gunshot wounds, the patient was shot in the chest, specifically in the right lung. All we have is what's left of the antibiotic gel. Please try to conserve it. But we need the gel to treat the gunshot wounds. What'll we do if we run out? If worse comes to worse, we'll just have to suture them. It'll drop his vitals, but we have no choice. Understood. Well, there's the pellet. All right. The shotgun pellet has been removed. Apply antibiotic gel to fix the membrane in place. The external wounds have been treated. Let's continue on to extracting the pellets from inside the right lung. Please open him up. severely. The patient won't last long at this rate. Well, we'll just have to be quick. 
The pellet seems to be lodged in... Now drain the... There's the pellet. All right. The shotgun apply a synthetic... We'll fix the membrane with antibiotic gel. We need to conserve how much we use. We've extracted the pellets and treated the gunshot wounds. Let's close him up. We have no way of recovering his vitals like this. Please close him up carefully, and don't let your guard down until you're finished. We've gone through a little less than half of our remaining supply of antibiotic gel. We're running low on the gel. We're almost completely out of gel! Well, that's it. We've run out of the antibiotic gel. We finished it, somehow. I've come to realize just how valuable the stabilizer is. That was an operation that only the two of you could have performed. Great work, doctors. Nice work, Doc. The boss has decided to let him live. For now. Besides, we can always use his organs later if needed. Who is this boss of yours? He's got connections, it seems. Well, maybe you'll have a chance to meet him. Hey, get up! <sighs> Another day in paradise. I'd like to get some sun soon. So, doctors, how are you doing? Couldn't be better, thanks. I'm not trying to make small talk, it's a serious question. What? Let me see your eyes. All right, these three are clean. What have you got in store for us now? Oh, nothing special. Just another operation. Stigma again. Found yourself a new lab rat, huh? Hardly. You can blame Mother Nature for this one. Is that what you tell yourself? Hey, we didn't plan this one. He was infected by the other patient. What? That's impossible. Stigma can't be contracted that way. Like I said before, I'm not here to answer questions. But the boss and the director will be observing the operation. So make sure you don't disappoint them. Doctor! It seems Stigma's more dangerous than we thought. This way, boss. Hey, you look just like you did on TV. What's up, Doc? The name's Kidman. I run the show around here. You're in charge here? Are either of you doctors? This patient's got the onyx strand. You know the drill, right? Don't fail me, if you want to live. Is this how you get your kicks? Don't get cocky, Doc. This isn't a game. It's business. Business? And what, pray tell, are you selling? Weapons are worth a fortune on the black market. But you wouldn't know about that, would you, Doc? Stigma is one deadly weapon, especially to the medical industry. So the best market for it is a war zone. Stigma would be the ultimate weapon there. It still needs some fine-tuning, though. It's a clever plan, in theory, but there's no way it'll work. Oh, yes it will. Cause I have you guys to help me. Leland, bring in the patient. How about you, Director? Would you like to stay and watch? That won't be necessary. With the skills they've demonstrated, there should be no problem. And the chance of tertiary infection is theoretically zero. You're the creator of Stigma? Professor Wilkins? All right, Leland. Let's get this show on the road. This still doesn't make any sense. What's with these readings? However, the variations are definitely greater than they were before. 
a secondary infection. That means stigma has changed again. <laughs> We're reenacting that TV show right here. Good luck to you, huh, Doc? Watch out for Onyx. Its claws are sharp. I've had enough of your mouth. Just ignore him, Val. I'll save him, no matter what kind of stigma he has. It's a new type of onyx. We don't know what will happen. Be careful. The onyx is hiding somewhere. Use the ultrasound to find its shadow. It's exposed. Inject it with a the serum is still effective. The onyx has gone into hiding. Its movement patterns haven't changed. We can expect it to start making fake copies of itself. Look carefully and find the real one. It's going into hiding. Find it! It should only take a little more. Hang in there, Doc. What the... Why are these blood vessels showing up on the ultrasound? Did it inject toxins into the bloodstream? The ultrasound is useless if it's like this. Are you saying this is some form of self-defense against us? I can't believe it. The main body must be somewhere. Find it and remove it with a scalpel. No matter what it tries, we're going to find it and cut it out. Please, let this be it. Yes, the onyx is gone. There are no remaining wounds either. Let's close them up. Please suture the incision. It was completely different from the other onyx. If something like this were to be used as a weapon, we need to get back to Caduceus and tell them about this. What now, boss? I'll give them a choice. But I doubt they'll join up voluntarily. The three of them are all quite firm. Maybe if they could... Nah. Only the head honcho would be able to perform such an operation. If they're not willing to cooperate, then we'll wash our hands of them. Now wasn't that fun, Doc? Isn't your director here today? Why? Are you worried about him? He was satisfied with the results of the operation, so he returned to the lab. He said no further operations will be necessary. Then I guess you don't need us anymore, huh? Yes. And no. We just need to decide what to do with you. What do you mean? There won't be any more life-saving operations for the time being. But there are some experiments I'd like you to perform on human subjects. <sighs> I'm curious to see if I can get you to drop the Goody Two-Shoes Act. Will you wield your scalpel in the name of science? What do you say? I'd rather die. I'm a doctor. Find someone else to do your dirty work. Oh, come on. Is that the best you can do? Well, let's see how long your bravado lasts. Leland, I'll be taking them to their new cell tomorrow. Have it ready. Got it, boss. I'll show you what a mistake it is to let your conscience rule. Val, Elena. Yes? There's something I need to tell you. Okay. Is it about the choice they gave us? No, it has nothing to do with that. It's more of a confession. Back when I was helping the professor with his research, I made a number of genetically engineered mice for use in experiments. There was something different about one of them. 
It looked just like the others, but it held a terrible secret inside. You don't mean... It happened while I was operating on the subject's kidney. I was excising a tumor. That's when it came into contact with artificial blood and started growing at a frightening pace. That was the birth of stigma. Marcus, I can't believe this. I disposed of the subject and proposed that we put a halt to the research, unleashing a new pathogen into the world in order to study its treatment. I argued that that was the wrong way to perform research, but the professor wouldn't listen. That's why I volunteered to go to Alaska. I should have just quit. I had no idea you'd follow me there and get dragged into this mess. I was desperate to study your techniques, but I never imagined that that's why you were there. You realize that I may personally be responsible for the advent of stigma? If it wasn't for me, none of this would have happened, and you two wouldn't be in this position. But I want you to know, as a doctor, I've always held the highest regard for human life. Don't be so hard on yourself, Marcus. There are still many things we don't know about stigma. We need your help to unlock those secrets. Just so you know, Dr. Vaughn, I'll always be there to assist you no matter what. Thanks. I appreciate it. All right. Remove their blindfolds. Water torture is our specialty. <laughs> Let me tell you, it's a sight to see. Watching our adversaries scream as they get swallowed up by the cold, dark water. You think you can force us to do your bidding? Just holler if you change your mind, and I'll stop the water. But make no mistake, that'll be the last choice you ever make on your own. Thanks, but I think I'll stick with the original choice. I'd rather die than work for a scumbag like you. <laughs> you got spunk, Doc. I'll tell you what. I'll do you a favor. When I bury you, I'll put surgical instruments in your coffin. That way, they'll be able to identify the body. <laughs> then I'll go ahead and lock him up, boss. Hold on, Leland. Use this. What kind of lock is this, boss? I found it in a toy store. I have no other use for it, so why not give it a try? We'll get a good laugh watching him try to unlock it. How far are they planning on taking this nonsense? He said he found this lock at a toy store. Hmm. Now that you mention it, I remember seeing a commercial for this. Something about connect the four friends and release the lock. Why is he using a toy? What the hell's wrong with this guy? They must think we'll beg for mercy. But if we can unlock this, then we'll have a chance to escape, won't we? Yeah, but my bet is they don't think we can do it. Well, I'm not gonna let some stupid toy be the thing that makes us drown in here. That's the spirit. We can unlock it. Leave this puzzle to me. Square panels can be rotated with the forceps. Turn the panels and make a path using the lines. You said something about connect the four friends. What do you mean by friends? The shapes, the colors, something else? <laughs> Looks like they've started. Yeah, right. I'm not planning on drowning in- Crap. Crap, I gotta go use the can. It's connected. Please move on to the next- <sighs> Isn't this pretty hard for a toy? Huh. I hear it's pretty popular among college students. So, he's one- It connected, but is this right? All right, just one more. We solved it! Quiet. Now's our chance. They haven't noticed that we've opened the lock. Then let's get a move on.
Where are we? Outside! We're outside! And we're still alive. That's right. We were able to escape. Where are they? Where did they go? Hurry up and find them! All of you! Come on, we have to keep moving. Over there! I see light!
I'd like to hear the Department of Health's opinion regarding stigma. Secretary Mendez? I consider this case a very serious matter. It's unlike any plague mankind has ever known. Could you please elaborate? First off, stigma is a virulent disease created by man. Reports indicate that a contagious strain exists, which means it's a significant threat. In addition to that, there's an underground organization attempting to exploit the situation. So we must face the possibility that stigma is being circulated as a biological weapon. But in order to investigate, we need the cooperation of Homeland Security. No need to worry about that. I've already notified the appropriate individuals. Thank you. I appreciate it. However, I'm afraid we don't have much time to waste. There have been reports from around the world describing symptoms that suggest the presence of stigma. There's even been a major outbreak in one country. You're talking about Kularuma, correct? Yes. We've had one patient flown in for examination. We'll handle the treatment and subsequent analysis here in the U.S. Caduceus will be seeing to it. In case you weren't aware, Mr. Deputy Secretary, Caduceus is our country's finest. There's no need to explain. I'm familiar with the organization. I'm so glad that you're all back safely. I must have been so scared. You have no idea. But we survived. With each other's help. I'm sorry you had to endure such an ordeal. We must take stringent measures to strengthen our security immediately. With no word since your disappearance, we had begun to fear the worst. How are you feeling? Were you harmed? It was a difficult situation, but we were determined to get through it. Having met our enemy face to face, my resolve to continue this mission has grown even stronger. I wouldn't have objected if you had decided to resign, but I'm glad to hear you say that. We can't win the war against stigma without you three. Something caught my attention while we were being held captive. It concerns Professor Wilkins. I think he may be a member of the Kidman family. Goodness, could that be true? The professor? What do you mean, Marcus? Well, you know that guy they refer to as the director? His face was hidden, but he was definitely the same height and had the same build as the professor. He also appeared to be the center of their research on stigma. If he is Professor Wilkins, then this would all make sense. I have to disagree. The way he moved and spoke, I just don't think he could be Professor Wilkins. I'm not positive, but it seems very likely. I just can't figure out how he got mixed up with them. Regardless, I'll notify the FBI. Now, I understand that you're concerned, but I need you to continue with your mission. The patient has been flown in by the military. We don't know how infectious the disease is, so use the quarantine transfer unit. According to preliminary examination, we are dealing with a new type of stigma, so we'll be relying heavily on your abilities. I know that's a lot to ask since you just returned, but I hope you're up for the challenge. Well, at least we're not out of practice, having been forced to operate while we were held captive. Oh my, is that true? Yes, believe it or not. I'd like to say that you will have the very best working with you in the research lab. But unfortunately, we've lost a key staff member. We'll still do all that we can, though. Did something happen? Cynthia left. She quit while you were away. Why would she do such a thing? She seemed so dedicated to her work. Do you have any idea why she quit, Isabella? As a representative of Humani, I'm not at liberty to say, but I'll tell you as a friend. She seems to have gone through a lot with the higher-ups concerning stigma. They blamed her for developing products that increase patients' susceptibility to stigma. But no one could have anticipated that side effect. It's a shame to lose someone like her, but we can't dwell on it. Let's prepare for the operation, Val. That's too bad. I had hoped to work with Cynthia until we eradicated stigma together. Just so you are aware, I'll be present throughout the operation. 
I realize it may be difficult to perform such a procedure after your recent ordeal. Don't worry, Kanai. We can handle it. I'm glad to hear that. I can't tell you how relieved I was to learn that you three were safe. I hear this is a new strain of stigma. Yes, but the preliminary tests didn't tell us much. We did learn two things, though. First, it has multiple arms, which are causing all the damage. Second, we can prevent further damage by removing the grapplers from the ends of the arms. Sounds like a complicated procedure. It's affixed to the affected area, so we can't pull it off by force. In that case, I think we should first try to restrict its movement and then excise it. That's where this baby comes in. What's that? It's the result of our research. It will allow us to turn Stigma's own characteristics against it. You see, we were able to extract a calorium-based fluid, which will temporarily restrict its... Basically, it can stop the pathogen's movement for a short period of time. Would you mind giving it a try? No problem. I'm ready to begin the operation. We can't afford to make any mistakes. Unfortunately, we don't know how to proceed until we've taken a closer look. But at least we have a second opinion today. Well, let's begin by opening him up. Stigma is definitely present. It's bizarre looking, that's for sure. It appears to have a core from which the arms are extending. Let's try using that new stuff. We're supposed to inject it into the grapplers, correct? Something's been released from the central core. Toxin, I presume. If we ignore it, it'll enter the patient's body via the grapplers. Needless to say, it will be detrimental to the patient. We have to find a way to stop the toxin from spreading. I see. If we pinch the arm with the forceps, we can slow the spread of the toxin. The grappler stopped moving, Doctor. We can extract it. That takes care of one of them. Two down, one to go. It's withdrawn its arms. That's probably the result of a rapid contraction designed to stimulate regeneration. Perhaps this can be used to our advantage, since it places a great deal of stress on the core. If we repeat this process, we may be able to force the core to destroy itself. All right, let's give it a shot. Its arms are back out. Hurry up and remove the grapplers. what it's like to have a real operating room. I hope that's the last we see of that thing. Well, the operation was a success. 
great work. That was an admirable effort, considering the difficulty of the operation. Yes, it was a tricky one, but somehow we managed. I don't mean to press my luck, but I actually have another favor to ask of you three. This will be an extremely difficult task. So it's no different than usual. Don't worry. We're quite used to extremely difficult tasks by now. We received a request for aid from the country of Kuluruma, where an outbreak occurred. They desperately need doctors who know how to treat stigma. The government would like to provide assistance. That is, of course, if there are any doctors willing to volunteer. And you want us to go? If we can get some of our personnel into Kuluruma where that metal originates, then I believe we can advance our research on stigma. But to do so, we have to put three of our finest staff members in danger. Not just of infection, but also of insurrection. Kuluruma is a hotbed for guerrilla activity. It's a time bomb waiting to go off. What do you think, Val? Well, ultimately, what's our purpose? I mean, is it worth risking our lives for? If we're trying to convince ourselves, we could say it's to protect the world from stigma. Elena, how do you feel about traveling south of the equator? Well, it's better than going somewhere cold. Glad to hear that. Then it's decided. We accept. Madame Director. Allow me to introduce President Moreno who has taken time out of his busy schedule to greet you. Welcome. I thank you wholeheartedly for coming all this way to save our citizens. It's an honor to meet you, Mr. President. Nice to meet you, sir. We hope that we can be of assistance. Hmm. You're much younger than I expected. But nevertheless, I'm sure you're quite skilled. They seem a bit suspicious. Stigma has claimed many victims. And now rumors are sending the populace into a panic. My people's suffering is my own. That is why I am so grateful to receive help from your country. We'll do our best, as a sign of friendship between our countries. I am counting. Commander, where are the doctors headed? Sir, they'll be deployed to Arbel, sir. I see. Our American friends may not be prepared for what is in store for them. But I am afraid we have no alternative. I'm counting on the three of you to care for the infected and determine the cause of the outbreak. In any event, there are some unruly elements in this country. So please, be careful. Oh, I almost forgot. Commander, bring her in. Yes, sir. Right away. I am assigning you a special escort. You're our important guests, after all. Come, Pepita. <laughs> Don't be afraid. She's a smart dog she won't bite. In fact, she's very well trained. It's a custom in our country to give such dogs as special gifts. I hope you'll accept her. Uh, yes, um, thank you very much. Mm. Nice to meet you, Pepita. <laughs> I intended to have a banquet prepared in your honor. We're doctors, not diplomats, so there's no need for formalities. We're here to help the sick. Yes, you're absolutely correct. We all have our work to attend to, including me. I wish you the best of luck with your assignment. Well then, good day. The president is now leaving the premises. The president sure seems busy. Yeah, he has his hands full between the gorillas and the economy. And add to that stigma. Nice to meet you, Dr. Vaughn, Dr. Blaylock, and Miss Salazar. And you are... Maria Estrada. 
I was born here, but I went to med school and did my residency in the U.S. I'll be acting as your interpreter. I'm thinking about practicing medicine here, actually. Oh, yes, they did say something about an interpreter. Maria, are you feeling okay? I think I may be coming down with something. <laughs> Look at her eye, Val. It's all red. Maria, did you get your immunization shots before returning here? No. Because I was born here, I didn't think I needed them. As a doctor, you should know better. Val, she might have Vimase fever. If that's the case, she'll need immediate treatment. That's endemic to this region, but she hasn't lived here in years. Elena, I need your help. We need to check her lungs. Okay, I'll get everything ready. We're unfamiliar with Vimase fever. Supposedly, it causes unusual tumors in the lungs. That's all I know. Those must be the fever tumors mentioned in the examination reports. It appears that removing these tumors will greatly improve the patient's condition. That gives us an idea of how to treat her, but aren't these readings strange? You're right. These fluctuating numbers are a cause for concern. It seems like they're periodically rising and falling. We can't just leave her like this. There's no time to waste. Let's begin the operation immediately. All right, let's get started. Well, here we go. Let's all do our best. So these are the fever tumors. At least we won't have to use the ultrasound to find them, like with normal tumors. That'll help save us some time. We'll still have to be exceptionally cautious. Look at it. It's changing colors periodically. It's like a chameleon. I believe that we can use the same procedure to remove these as with normal tumors. They're already exposed, so please begin by drip. Now that you've drained this, now place it on where we successfully extract the membranes been affixed. But it left a scar. about these scars, Doctor. The readings show that the tumors are gone, right? These must be normal scars, then. We'll send the data back to Caduceus, just in case. Let's close her up. Please close up the patient. Seeing a tumor change color like that was surprising, to say the least but I'm glad there weren't any complications. Good work, team. What are we gonna do with our interpreter bedridden? Unfortunately, that's not the biggest problem here. You see, she's also a doctor. We could have taught her how to treat stigma. Someone will have to continue seeing patients after we're gone, right? Well, we talked it over. What did she say? She insists on coming, even if it kills her. Are you going to allow that, Marcus? As a patient, I would advise her not to go. But as a doctor, I must respect her decision. She studied medicine to help the people of this country. And now is their greatest hour of need. If we carefully monitor her condition along the way, will that ease your fears, Val? Yes, somewhat. But I completely understand her desire to help people. Sastena pura esteno. 
Pufta Inamika. He works at the mine too. He says that one of his friends has also contracted stigma. Some victims were taken to the hospital. Many have already passed away. It's worse than I imagined. So the mine he's talking about, is it nearby? Efterashan Estino? Tonpon Boise. He says it's about a two-hour walk from here. We suspect that there's a relationship between the mine and stigma. I think that's a reasonable conclusion. But since so many of the villagers work at the mine, it'll be hard to prove it. So this is where the mine workers live. It's a poor village, but things have gotten better since the mine was built. However, the villagers only receive a tiny fraction of the profits. Who owns the mine? The government. But they sold the mining rights to an international corporation, so a lot of foreigners come and go. It's also been the target of guerrilla attacks. What about the victims of stigma? Epi Kahini Chui Andaya? Adohipko and Ansi. He doesn't know the exact number, but there are more than a few. Tell him to bring some of them to the army's camp. We'll operate once we're through examining them. And also, tell them not to worry about the cost because the president is footing the bill. Doctor, we're done setting up the operating tent. Thank you, Commander. What's the status of each patient, Marcus? There are three who need to be opened up immediately. Let's do one right after the other. Pepita, it's your job to guard the tent, okay? Maria, these are going to be intense operations. Will you be all right? Yes. I'm feeling a little better now. Watch carefully, okay? This is a complicated procedure that you'll need to learn. Not bad for a makeshift operating room. I don't foresee any problems with operating here. Let's begin the conference at once. The results of the examinations indicate that these three people require immediate surgery. Each of them has been infected with a different strain of stigma. Hearing that stigma is spreading sends a chill down my spine. This is a first. We'll have to perform three consecutive stigma operations. Do you remember how to deal with each strain, Doctor? That's what we've got you for, Elena. In that case, I'll do my best. There's so much that I must learn. In order to save my country and those suffering from disease, I can't miss a single detail. Three different strains. I'm as ready as I'll ever be. Three stigma patients in a row. This is going to be a crash course in stigma treatment, Maria. It's not going to be easy for us either, but we need to give it all we've got. Okay, let's begin operating on the first patient. This strain of stigma is Soma. We begin by draining the cellular tissue around the main section, right? The core is exposed. Use the laser on it. The laser is working. Up. 
The first patient has been treated. Let's move on to the next patient. We're going faster than we've planned. Amazing! Move on to the second patient. The stigma is Brachion. We'll need to extract the tissue at the tips of the arms. Get Robert's new serum ready. If we crush the grapplers with the forceps, the toxins will be slowed. have grown back. Remove the tips. as many times as we need. One more to go. Incredible! We're working much more quickly than anticipated. The third type is Ops. This is our last patient. Well, at least we don't have some idiot with a microphone shouting at us today. We'll be able to focus. Confirming the presence of Ops. Use the laser on the core. Drain the discharged material. Use the... We're almost done. Keep it up until it's all over. The tissue has formed a tumor. Burn it with a laser. has been defeated. Three continuous operations on Stigma. But we can't relax yet. Close up the last patient. I can't believe we finished so fast. You really are amazing. I hope that our operations today will lead to the advancement of medicine in this country. Don't worry. I'm sure they will.
Well, Maria, think you can remember all that? I've memorized the steps, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to perform the operation. What's most important is for you to discover your own talents. Don't put so much pressure on yourself that you have a nervous breakdown. You know, there's one thing that's been bothering me. What's that? Why was the outbreak here so sudden? If it had something to do with Calurium, then it should have happened sooner. I just don't get it. Why now? Anyway, we need to have a look at that mine. Let's go talk to the commander. He says he'd be glad to tell us the way to the mine. He also says thank you for saving the villagers. That's nice to hear. But tell him that we still have a ways to go before stigma can be prevented. My men and I will escort you there. But it's a dangerous area. We should avoid staying there too long. There's no reason to worry. We have Pepita with us, remember? Besides, it's pretty important. Oh, Tofturi Pasamika. He says that since we have a dog, this might help. It's a towel used by one of the mine workers. Ah, this will keep us on the right track. What is it, Pepita? Is something out there? Let her be. She's probably just barking his shadows. But I have to admit, I'm a little disappointed. I wasn't expecting this mine to look so ordinary. According to Robert, this is the world's only deposit where special microorganisms live in the ore. He also told me that its formation has something to do with bionic alloying. Let's bring a sample back with us, even though we already have some of the imported metal. Valerie, do you think that the stigma here occurred naturally? This is a unique environment, although the ore's been mined here in the past. Regardless, stigma is a bizarre organism. My guess is that it was intentionally introduced to the area. But for what reason? Well... Remember what that bastard Kidman said? Stigma would be the ultimate weapon there. What if this place was targeted? The mine? Yeah, considering the amount of profit it generates, it wouldn't be surprising if they showed up here. Besides, this is the perfect place to test stigma. You're suggesting that Kidman's involved somehow? Pepita? We're under attack! Return fire! <laughs> I don't see them anywhere! Pepita tried to protect us and... No, Pepita, stay back! Isn't there anything you can do for her, Doctor? She'll go into shock and die at this rate. We have no choice. Well, we're not vets, but we gotta give it a shot. It's all right, Pepita. We'll save you. Let's stay calm and talk this through. Multiple pellets have struck her abdomen. We've seen this before. It's a shotgun wound. Looks like she was shot from a distance, though. None of the pellets went all the way through, so they must be embedded inside her. Our goal, then, is to extract the pellets, but have either of you operated on a dog before? Never in my life, but it can't be all that different. Let's remove as many pellets as possible without opening her up, and then suture the wounds. Got it. I'll do my best to help. Please save her. All right, let's help this brave girl. No! She's going into cardiac arrest! Get out the defibrillator. But it's designed for humans! We've got no choice. Just lower the voltage. Here you go. You know what to do.
Just press the paddles against her body. I've lowered the voltage. Keep an eye on the bridge. Yes, we have a pulse. But there's hemorrhaging. We need to deal with that immediately. Right, or she'll bleed to death. We'll need to take care of it as we remove the pellets. Keep an eye on the electrocardiogram, too. She may go into cardiac arrest. I see a pellet. Please extract it before the wound hemorrhages again. That takes care of this one. Please, something's wrong with her EKG. Be careful, doctor. Phew. I was worried there for a second. aren't stabilizing. There must be another hemorrhage somewhere. Wait! Don't do anything yet! She's flatlining! Please use the defibrillator! Doctor, something's wrong! Alright, her pulse is back. Let's continue the procedure. I don't see any other external injuries. Let's get her back to camp. She's going into cardiac arrest? We can't let her die now. We have a pulse. Looks like we bought ourselves a little more time. Let's get back to camp and leave the rest to the pro. Good job. I don't think we could have done anything more. You're gonna be all right, Pepita. I wonder if she has any idea at all what we're saying. I'm sure she knows we mean well. Yeah, maybe so. Don't move, Pepita. I'm glad it turned out okay. This is Sergeant Major Lopez. What seems to be the problem? What? Regroup immediately! Doctors, we have a situation. We have to get back to camp immediately. What's going on? The gorillas have attacked. A full-on battle's broken out. Fellow members of the Kuluruma Liberation Front, you are the true soldiers of this country. The Federal Army no longer upholds truth and justice. The rampant spread of bribery and corruption throughout the government cannot be tolerated. They sell our natural resources for their own personal gain. There is no time to waste. The good people of this country look to us to right these wrongs. The revolution shall arise from here. One of the obeys. We shall rebuild Kunarumba with our own hands. I'm sorry, but your visit must be cut short, doctors. This area has become a danger zone. The guerrillas have taken one of the obeys. The government is launching a campaign to win it back. There's a military base nearby? Its existence has been kept confidential for strategic reasons. But according to our intelligence, Major General Ramirez has double-crossed us. Unbelievable! Our unit has been asked to join the mission the President has ordered. Sounds like a war's about to erupt. What are we supposed to do? Allow me to explain. Mr. President! We will be launching an assault on Wanadeo Base momentarily. I would be most grateful if you could tend to any soldiers who are injured in the offense. We are short on medics, you see. We didn't come here to get involved in military operations. However, if we don't intervene, the guerrillas will attack the villagers. How can you recognize the threat of stigma and simply ignore the threat of the guerrillas? 
I represent the citizens of this country. If you continue to defy their will, I will have no choice but to imprison you under martial law. Mr. President, you can't be serious. These three came here with the best intentions. All right, we'll do as you ask. Dr. Vaughn, are you sure, Marcus? But we'll only do it on the following conditions. First, you agree to use the profits earned by the mine to help stigma patients. That includes aiding the villagers. If you truly represent the will of the people, then that shouldn't be a problem. Secondly, you must transport all injured combatants, friend or foe, to us. We're not taking sides. Very well. I accept your conditions. We're heading to one Adele. Progress report, sir. We penetrated the front gate, but we're sustaining casualties. All right. Take the injured to the visiting doctors. What's the status of the enemy? We estimate that they are few in number, sir. However, we have received some disturbing information. Apparently, there are some foreigners providing them with assistance. Who would do such a thing? Arms dealers. Well, at least they're not journalists. Let's proceed as planned. This really is a war. It's detestable. But I'm afraid it's a reality of the world we live in. Doctor, the first aid tent is filling up with injured men. Looks like the nightmare is only beginning. Come on, let's do what we can. We've gotten word that five patients are headed our way. Or really is hell, isn't it? What condition are they in? The first patient has severe electrical burns on his upper body. He touched electrified barbed wire. Even worse, he's undergoing cardiac arrest from the shock. There's no time to lose. What about the others? We don't have any information yet. We'll just have to deal with it. Come on. It's our responsibility as doctors to do whatever we can. Defibrillator ready. Hurry! We'll begin treating his injuries as soon as we get a pulse. The defibrillator is ready. Please begin. All right, we have a pulse. Let's start treating these electrical burns. Prepare for skin transplants. Inject the culture fluid into the right half of the patient's body to prepare skin for transplanting. Please begin by either injecting the culture fluid or by treating the... Remove the portion of skin with a scalpel and I'll keep it ready for transplanting. Let's prepare a few more sheets of donor skin. Place the skin graft be- There's still more of the burned area. Please, please move on to the next- Another pool of blood is formed. The burns turned black. We can't take our time with this.
complete. We're going quickly. The next patient will be here soon, so get ready. We're set. How's the next patient? He's taken gunshot hits from both a rifle and a shotgun. Got it. We'll start by treating- There's a pellet. Extract it and treat the gunshot wound. Drain the blood and quickly place a synthetic membrane over the wound. We're done out here, but there's still damage to the abdomen. We need to open him up and treat him. Let's use the magnification tool. The pellet is the now treat the wound made by the pellet. This particular gunshot wound, it's lodged in, it's a shotgun pellet. Extract it before the blood gets in the way again. It looks like a rifle round. This is only part the other piece seems to be lodged inside. There's the rest of the round. Let's get it out of there. It only takes a fraction of a second to shoot someone. It takes us this long to heal him. Close him up. Please close the incision. You're going rather quickly. Keep it up. We've gotten a message from headquarters. Our backup is on the way. That's good to hear. I just hope they make it in time. Come on, who's the next patient? Doesn't say what happened. It has taken a massive blow to the chest. We're done treating the external injuries. But I'm worried about his internal organs. Let's open him up. I was expecting something worse than this. I've got a bad feeling about this. Let's be careful. Please close the wound. Suture the wound before it opens again. That's all of the large lacerations. Let's treat what's left. This is the last of the debris embedded in this body. Spiders aren't stabilizing. Let's look around with the magnification tool. There must be more wounds. Strange. His vitals aren't stabilizing. There must be something else we- How did this get here? Hmm. That shadow. Is there something inside? Please do check. There should be more. stabilizing. He'll be alright now. Let's start closing him up. Please close him up. We're proceeding very quickly. Let's keep up this pace for the last two patients. This man's in critical condition. He's taken a heavy blow to his left side. This isn't good. His vitals are too low. Broken bone and various external wounds. He seems to have internal injuries. We have to open him up immediately. I'm worried about his internal organs. This is bad. First, we need to retrieve the bone fragments. Let's watch out for hemorrhaging. 
severe condition. It's rupturing randomly. All the bone fragments have been collected. Now that we've taken care of the wounds, we can reassemble the bone fragments. Bone. Use the antibiotic gel to keep the pieces in place. We're done here. Let's close up the patient. Please close the incision. Just one more to go. We'll be able to treat them all in our estimated time. This is the last patient. The report says that she may be suffering from hemorrhaging in the pericardium. That doesn't sound good. Let's open her up. The myocardium is hemorrhaging. We'll have to stop the bleeding. Please continue the operation, but look out for that hemorrhaging inside the pericardium. Now drain the blood. Suture it before it hemorrhages again. I'll stop it. She seems to be in stable condition. Let's close her up. Suture the entry incision. That's all five patients. It's amazing that we were able to save them all within our time limit. I have a status report, sir. One of the obese is back in our hands. The guerrillas have surrendered and are disarming as ordered. What about Ramirez? He's nowhere to be found. He must have slipped away. Don't let him escape. We must capture him and ascertain the truth. Calm the entire area until you find him. Make arrangements to transfer the guerrillas to the military police. Every soldier, except those on guard, should search for Ramirez and the other escapees. Pepita, we'll be counting on your nose. Now, find Ramirez! <laughs> what a harrowing experience. But I guess the president succeeded in suppressing the guerrillas. It's a high price to pay for peace. This isn't what we came here to do. Dr. Vaughn, Dr. Blaylock, Elena, I want to thank you all. For what? For saving this village. You put your lives on the line, despite the risk involved. I also want to thank you for negotiating with the president. You mean getting him to help the stigma victims? That was, well, kind of spur of the moment. Anyway, I'll leave it to you to make sure he keeps his promise. I hope I'll be as good a doctor as each of you. I'm sure you will. Doctors, we have more patients. Mr. President? The former Major General is in our custody, but he's badly injured. We've also detained two foreigners. One is in critical condition, and the other is unconscious. 
Ugh. I can't take it. Just kill me. I want to hear everything you know about the guerrilla forces. <laughs> like I tell you, I will be president someday. He has an abdominal injury. Is it his liver? How ironic. First they want to kill him, and now they want us to save him. If I wasn't the president, I might have killed him. But now, I must save him for the good of the people. Marcus, over here! Hmm? You? What the...? <clears throat> Who the hell are you? Kidman's crony. Uh, now I recognize you. <laughs> I never expected to see you guys here. So Kidman is behind the stigma outbreak? It seems that way. But I still don't understand why they were cooperating with the gorillas. They were probably after the mining rights to the Calurium. He promised us world domination. I guess I was a fool to believe. Then does that mean this guy over here is Kidman? Why don't you ask him yourself? That won't be possible. He's already dead. All right, Val. Let's establish priority and begin the first operation. They're both in critical condition. Severe external abdominal wounds. Is this ruptured? Hmm. We may have to consider a transplant. If that's the case, then let's be prepared for it. Elena, get the cross match ready and bring Kidman's body into the room. According to the results of the examination, both of the survivors show signs of severe liver damage, as we anticipated. Their livers are too far gone to be healed. Val, how are the cross-matching results? Fortunately, the cross-matching was negative. The panel reactive antibody tests were clear too. So a transplant is possible in each case. Then let's split up Kidman's liver between the two of them. We're performing a liver transplant? Here? Why? Do you morally object to using an organ from someone who died in battle? No, I understand, but... I'm afraid we don't have time to debate. Elena, ask the other team to extract the donor's liver. We'll perform both transplant operations. Got it. Then please be ready. All right, let's begin the operation as soon as the liver's ready. We need to hurry. The patient's vitals are dangerously low. Where's the liver to be transplanted? I'll get it. This is the liver we'll use for the operation. I'll prepare the anastomosis constrictor we'll need for this operation. The order in which we should connect the liver is vein, portal vein, artery, and bile duct. Let's start by connecting the vein, then. The constrictor is ready. Please inject the blue blood vessel is the vein. Please inject the constrictor there next. Make an incision in the vein while the vein is the vein's been constricted. Grasp the tube from the liver with the fourth anastomosis on the vein is complete. Please suture it and huh? What? Why is there stigma here? Don't tell me. One of them was infected? We don't have time to ask questions. The patient's vitals have increased a little. Next, inject the constrictor late. Keep burning it with a laser. The portal vein is the yellow tube. Another one appeared.
regeneration is going smoothly. Transplant operation. The portal vein is the yellow. Now's our chance to make an ins. We can't keep it. Let's perform anastomosis on. Let's suture it before the patient's vitals have recovered. The red blood vessel is the artery. Please make an incision before the cons. Drain the blood and perform the anastomosis. Now suture it. Do it before the bile duct is the last. The bile duct is the green tube. Please make an incision while it's constrict- It's hemorrhaging a lot. Perform the anastomosis before- Now suture it. We've transplanted the liver and destroyed the care. That was a surprise. Okay, let's close him up. This isn't good. Doctor, what's the matter? If that care came from the donor's liver... Then we'll have to do that again with the other patient, won't we? But we don't have a spare liver. Yeah, we have to do this. But let's be ready for anything. The patient will be transported to a safe location. I'm afraid of what might happen, but we should move on to the next operation. We're ready to go. Get that liver ready. Let's begin. The anastomosis treatment is the same as before. Just be careful that the constrictor doesn't wear off. The blue blood vessel is the vein. Make an incision with drain the blood and perform the next step. Pull it straight toward the anastomosis on the vein is finished. Next up is the... What? This can't be. It's stigma. And there's two of them. It's not just care? What a nightmare. I agree, but we can't run away from this. You're right. Bring out the Onyx Serum. Pretty ironic that we'd be using it on this- Vitals have improved slightly. Onyx has been ex- The yellow tube- The serum is working! Onyx has gone into hiding! One of the pair has been incinerated! It went into hiding again! This care is the type that creates tumors. Another care has appeared. Care have fused together. The laser's working. The onyx has been eliminated. Continue work just a little more. The pair has been incinerated. All that's left is to transplant the liver. The yellow tube is the portal vein. is working. There's a lot of hemorrhaging. Please perform the anastomosis, but now suture it. The patient's vitals have recovered a little. The artery is the red blood vessel. Make the incision. The constrictor wears. Drain the blood. Quickly. Now perform the anastomosis. Suture it before the constrict. The bile duct is the last step. The green tube is the bile duct. Now's our chance. Let's drain the blood and move on. Perform the anastomosis. Last one. Suture it. The liver has been transplanted, and the stigma have been dealt with. Well then, please close him up. I can't believe something like that could happen. 
Does this mean that we were transplanting stigma within the liver? Maybe. But then again, maybe not. All I know is that we took the best course of action we could given the situation. Well, that operation had several unexpected twists, but the liver transplants are both complete. Great work. They should pull through. Hopefully, they can shed some new light on stigma. That should put an end to the Kidman family, and to the uncertainty of Professor Wilkinson's whereabouts as well. We have to leave soon, Maria. In that case, I should try to learn as much as I can from you two before you go. Listen, Maria. It's not the President who will shape this country's future. It's people like you. You're the ones who will build a better future. We have to get going, but just know that we'll be rooting for you. Thank you. I'll do my best to make you proud. I'm glad you all came back in one piece. Although it sounds like you had another harrowing experience. Still, your actions have helped us tremendously. The information you obtained will bring us closer to solving the mystery of stigma. I never imagined that Kidman's outfit would be in Kuruma. Apparently, their reach extends beyond North America. It would have been nice if we could have learned the whereabouts of Professor Wilkins. But unfortunately, their boss died before we could get any information out of him. The situation is progressing favorably. We'll soon know the truth. Now, I do have some good news. The FBI is investigating the Kidman family, based on the information you provided. They've already found a potential informant, but that individual only agreed to cooperate on one condition. Which is? She wants an operation. But she doesn't want it done by just anyone. You see, she's seen you on TV, and you get the idea. You don't mean... Elena, I want you to prepare a surgical field kit. She has also requested that the operation be performed in her home. Marcus, Valerie, I'll leave the rest in your hands. That's totally absurd. Just who is this person? Ask the FBI. They know her well. What a foolish child. While he was still growing up, I tried to keep his ambition in check. It must have been difficult for you, Madame Devereaux. I was so proud when he became a doctor. It was the war that changed him. When he came back, he fell in with the wrong crowd. And somewhere along the line, he became obsessed with the idea of selling germs as weapons. Maybe it couldn't be helped considering my own ties to the Mafia. Alphonse, is there no coffee for our guests? Actually, Madame, he already offered us some, but we need to prepare for the operation. Oh, is that right? Alphonse, never mind. Many people want me dead, so it wouldn't be prudent for me to leave the mansion. So I apologize for having to summon such accomplished doctors as yourselves. Hmm, now where did they go? Uh, say, little girl, uh, did you happen to see a lighter in a cigar case lying around here somewhere? Madame Devereaux, you'll be undergoing a medical procedure soon. And if you're suffering from a serious illness, you need to stop smoking. Nah, you quacks are all the same. Now, about the information you're willing to disclose. I know a little about my son's land holdings, but I have no idea what he uses the property for. No matter how hard the FBI prodded, 
I wasn't about to give them the information for free. But if two of the world's top doctors will treat my illness, then it's a different story. I'll tell you after the surgery. I hope you don't mind. She seems rather calm for someone who just lost a son. She's been part of the underworld her entire life. I'm sure she knows how to cover up her emotions. No, I still think she's just trying to look brave. She's simply afraid to die too. The reason she demanded that we be the ones to perform the operation is that she's so cautious. I'm done disinfecting the room. I'll explain the procedure now. The large intestine is the affected area. Our objective will be to extract all the tumors there. These are the results of a more detailed examination. Blood identified in the stool. She seems to have symptoms of anemia as well. But there's no decrease in her appetite or weight, which doesn't seem to make sense. It would be best if we don't think of these as normal tumors. We'll get rid of those tumors no matter what kind they are. Start the operation. Well then, let's begin the operation. As we noted before, there are some odd inconsistencies from the pre-operation examination. Let's be careful. What is this? This is an unusual tumor. It looks like three blood vessels are supporting the tumor itself. We need to remove the blood vessels before we can excise the tumor. Let's drain the tumor's cytoplasm first. Next, let's sever the blood vessel. One blood vessel has been severed, one more, and then we'll be the tumor has been cut off. There are still wounds remaining. Please treat them. The tumor has been extracted. However, judging by the examination results, I don't think that's the only tumor around. The patient's vitals aren't stabilizing either, so let's keep going and stay cautious. Oh, more tumors! Treat them the same way as before. The tumor has been cut off. Please extract it with a full... That's another tumor removed. Please keep your guard up and treat the remaining wounds. Confirmed. Signs of tumor presence have decreased markedly. Just a little more to go. More tumors have appeared. There are more of them than before. I'll stop. Let's continue the operation. Hey, what's going on? Why did the lights go out? I don't know. It appears that the entire building's electricity has been cut off. Well, we can't stop now. Isn't there anything we can use for a light source? I've got an idea. Here's her lighter. Elena, can you shine the light on the affected area? Uh, understood. Please tell me where you want me to shine the light. I'll hold the lighter. Just tell- This is it. Please treat the wound. Be sure to treat the small tumors, too. vitals. We'll be able to extract it soon. One done. Two more to go. One more to go. The patient's vitals. All signs of tumors have disappeared. Let's treat the remaining wounds. the tumors. For a minute there, I wondered what else could have happened. About time. Let's get a report back from them about why the lights went out like that. Well then, 
Let's close her up and finish this. Operation complete. Great work, Doctor. Madame? Oh, it's over? How did it go? We've removed all the tumors. The operation was a success. <sighs> I knew I could count on you. All of the other doctors told me nothing could be done. Now, as I promised, I'll tell you where my son owns property. You should take it easy. The effects of the anesthetic haven't worn off yet. If you go upstairs to the guest room, you'll find a chest. There's a note inside which you may take. You see, I didn't want you to leave here empty-handed in the event that I died. That was very thoughtful of you, Madame Devereux. Ah, it is I who should be thanking you, young man. There wasn't much joy in my life before. But now, I feel as though I've turned a new page. Stigma is now an international problem. The organization in control of the pathogen has become a global syndicate. Even the guerrilla forces stirring up trouble in Kularuma are part of their network. This organization is employing Stigma as a weapon to terrorize the world. Their recent activity in Europe is particularly of concern, and those nations are on high alert. Furthermore, a base of operations was recently uncovered in Russia. Allow me to add one thing on that note. Caduceus International has dispatched a special team to Russia. They've already confirmed cases of stigma there. And within the United States, we've located another node. Kidman's Hideout. A sweep is planned for two days from now, once all necessary preparations have been made. My name is Irene Quattro. I'm the director of Caduceus. Our organization has agreed to assist in the operation. We will inspect the site for stigma, and if necessary, deal with any contamination. This is a risky operation, considering the nature of the pathogen. Please, proceed with extreme caution. I can't believe we're being sent to a Mafia hideout. It's so dangerous. And just so you know, I'm not that good of a shot either. What are you talking about? I thought we were just going to be on standby. We've been asked to investigate stigma at the scene, Leslie. We'll be entering the hideout once they've confirmed that it's safe inside. Really? Oh no, what am I going to do? What I fear is a large outbreak of stigma. We'll need to assign those patients to Marcus and the others. All right. This is an anti-stigma agent. It hinders the synthesis of nucleic acids, thereby inhibiting the growth of stigma. Needless to say, its clinical trial isn't complete, but this is an emergency. So it's like an antibiotic. Are there any side effects? It has strong nephrotoxicity. Well, we appreciate your efforts despite the less than perfect solution. However, if anything happens, it looks like we'll be relying on Dr. Vaughn and Dr. Blaylock again. Let me guess, the private sector pulled their support for research on the drug, right? Yes, unfortunately. We're not very popular at the moment. I was hoping to have Cynthia's assistance, but no one knows her whereabouts. It was bad enough she quit, but now she's missing? Hopefully she's just taking a vacation. But we should investigate her mysterious disappearance regardless. I've asked the director to look into the matter. I doubt she'd just run off without telling anyone. I know you're worried about Cynthia, though. Tomorrow's a big day. Make sure you're ready. We're interrupting our regularly scheduled program to bring you live coverage of a shocking event. Earlier this morning, 
the FBI raided a mafia hideout as part of a major investigation. The members of this crime ring are suspected of manufacturing a deadly pathogen known as stigma and are believed to be responsible for a number of recent terrorist acts. Stigma is a man-made... I'm sorry, it appears that the situation is changing as we speak. Excuse me, has someone been injured? Ladies and gentlemen, I just received new information. Someone has been injured in the raid. This is Guy Davidson of AN24 Network, bringing you all the details as they unfold. Apparently, the suspects are armed with both firearms and biological weapons. Here on the scene, tension fills the air. They're bringing us patients. All of them show signs of acute stigma infection. How many? Three. So they had stigma, just like we thought. And without their boss, they're out of control. What a nightmare. Why don't they just surrender? The patients are here! Do we know what type of stigma they're infected with? Brachion and Care have been confirmed, but we're getting other reactions besides those two. I believe that they're infected with three or four different stigma. What kind of cruel joke is this? They have that many stigma inside them at once? Fortunately, Chief Cromwell's anti-stigma medication is suppressing their development, but... That only buys us some time. We need to hurry. Bring in the patients in order of the severity of their condition. We'll start operating immediately. Understood. The first patient is in the most severe condition and is infected with Brachion. Please get ready. We don't need to see any more lives taken by stigma. Start the operation. Well then, let's do our best. I'll prepare the serum. Extract the grapplers from the ends of the arms. The toxins have been released. Control their progression with the forceps. This is going smoothly. Get ready for the arms to regenerate. you can. Done treating the first patient. Let's close him up. We're going rather quickly. Let's keep this up. The next patient. According to the examination results, a combination of soma and care? 
so we'll be dealing with two types at once. What a pain. Let's try to keep focused. Soma and Care confirmed. Another care has appeared. Care has created tumors. Don't forget to treat them. Coming. Uh, the care have fused together. Use the laser to incinerate it. released its cellular tissue. Now's our chance to use the laser against it. Soma's cellular tissue has split up. Please, hurry and drain it. The incineration of the Soma core is proceeding smoothly. The next patient is the last one. Just a little more left. We're moving along much faster than anticipated. Amazing, Doctor. This is our last patient. He seems to be infected with Soma. Soma confirmed. There's a reaction from the ultrasound. Is it Onyx? Well, ready the serum. I can't believe Onyx was hiding in here. Onyx went into hiding. After it. Let's end this already. Just a little more. The onyx is gone. The soma is still present. The soma tissue has dispersed. Drain it. Over? 
zones and we'll be done here. It looks like they've successfully gained control of the hideout. Let's finish this operation too. Amazing! Those were incredible operations! Ladies and gentlemen, it appears that the FBI has gained control of the hideout. We've also learned that the individuals believed to be injured were in fact infected with stigma. But at this point, they've all been treated by the on-scene medical team. What you're seeing now are the suspects who have been arrested and are being taken away. That's right, folks. The members of the Mafia have been arrested. Among them, I see a man who appears to be a scientist of some sort. Where are you taking me? Doctor, look! Professor Wilkins! That face! Marcus, it's definitely the professor. So he was behind this. Yes, the scar on Wilkins' head was exactly what we thought it was. An electronic device has been embedded in his brain, as you can see in this picture. That explains the change in behavior. Yes. But how was he able to conduct Kidman's stigma research? I mean, with that thing controlling his brain. It's like being under hypnosis. He could be manipulated by the power of suggestion, but he still retained his intelligence. So, is it possible to change him back to normal? And is an operation necessary? His family would like us to try. The authorities have also consented. They want to hear his testimony in his normal state. I believe it's possible, if the device can be removed without damaging his brain. Dr. Vaughn, I'd like to hear your opinion. I... I think we should give it a shot. For the professor's sake. Then, we should start considering the obstacles we'll face while performing the surgery. Dr. Everett, I'll let you know the time and the place once we've given this more thought. Yes, ma'am. There is one last question I'd like to raise, though. It may have occurred to you already, but I don't blame you for not mentioning it. Who was able to perform such a difficult operation? We'll be performing brain surgery on you, Professor. I'd be lying if I said it was going to be easy, but it's necessary to return you to your normal self. I don't think he can hear you, Dr. Vaughn. I'm a doctor, and this is my patient. He deserves an explanation. Is he even aware that his name is Wilkins? Maybe you should address him as director. That would be defeating the purpose, Val. Professor, if you know the name of the surgeon who operated on you, can you please tell me? Otherwise, we'll have to make our diagnosis during the operation. Do you despise me, Professor? After all, if I hadn't discovered stigma, then none of this would have occurred. And you wouldn't be in this condition. If only I'd done things differently. You are mistaken. Stigma was destined to be born from the very beginning. It matters not who is responsible for its discovery. We are blessed to have witnessed such a marvelous creation. Professor? Can you not imagine the possibilities of the next generation of stigma? It searches for a way to coexist within the human body, and I intend to grant its wish. What are you saying? This isn't the professor. It may be his body, but there's something else inside of him. I'll explain the situation. This operation's objective is the removal of a number of plugs from an implant in the professor's brain. This complex device releases a weak electrical current that can modify a person's personality. The plugs transmit that current to a specific section of nerves in the brain. I can't believe that Kidman and his group were capable of creating something like this. Nor can I. 
This isn't a device that can be handled with the equipment we've seen in their possession. Needless to say, it would require advanced equipment as well as skill to implant something like this. Extracting the plugs will be a difficult task, but I've told Elena the operational procedure. This goes without saying, but working on the brain carries great risk. You must work with the utmost care to prevent minimal after effects to the professor's brain. That's what I have in mind. We must succeed with this operation. A device like that, it shouldn't exist. Please prepare for the procedure. We will bring him back to his old self no matter what. Start the operation. Well, let's begin the operation. To begin with, we'll work on the actual implant itself. Before we can remove the plugs from the implant, we need to put the device into sleep mode. Use the forceps to pull out the three chips in the center. I'm told that doing this will cause part of its functions to be suspended. But please be careful not to touch the objects rotating around it when extracting the chips. Please place it in the first chip. That's the second one. The next chip is this is the last chip. Now, let's move on to extracting the plugs. The affected area is over here. These five plugs are supposedly sending special signals into the professor's brain. If we remove all five of them, the implant will stop having an effect on his personality. What are these lights on the ends of the plugs? It seems that they light up when they receive signals from the main system. Because of the modifications we made to the implant earlier, the transmission signal is cutting out. Please pull out each plug. Be sure to pull it. It's out. The first plug has been removed. Pull it up now. Plate. That's the third one. We removed more than half of them. This is now put it in. Good. That's all the plugs. We've disabled the personality disruptor. Finally, we need to turn the implant back on. Can't we just leave it alone? The device is in an unstable condition, and it's apparently dangerous to leave it as it is now. Hey, what's with this? All we have to do now is place the chips we removed back into the center, but... We have to put them in while avoiding those moving things? Yes, that will be the case. Well, we're in no position to stop right now, but still... Place that chip in the center. That's the first one. Please be careful. That's two down. This is the last one. There we go. Great work. All steps of the operation have been completed. I hope that this will return the professor to normal. We'll just have to wait until he regains consciousness and see for ourselves. Where am I? He's awake. Is he back to his usual self? I see the operation was a success. I'm glad I didn't fall victim to my creation. To stigma. Professor? His memory has reverted back to when we operated on him at Concordia. Marcus, I've decided to take your advice and stop researching stigma. I had a dream. Actually, it was more like a nightmare. So, I'm terminating the project. I think that's best. You're not gonna tell him the truth, Marcus? It's not for me to say. It's the director's decision. Good. You're all still here. You could've just paged us. That's okay. I'm sure you're all tired from the surgery. I apologize for the short notice, but there will be another meeting tomorrow. We'll be discussing the international investigation of the Stigma Syndicate. Doctors from the other Caduceus branches will be present. I'm concerned about the professor's condition, but I'll try to make time for it. There's one other thing you should know, just so you aren't taken by surprise. One of the topics on tomorrow's agenda concerns Cynthia. How so? She's in Central Asia. Caucasus, to be precise. And she appears to be there on behalf of the Syndicate. What?
This group based in Caucasus calls itself Parnassus. The syndicate was researching stigma under their supervision. Their leader is a man known as Master Bahushti, who according to our records, has resided in the United States under the name Ray Kerensky. Ray? You've got to be kidding! You know him? He and Cynthia were seeing each other. This man, Bahushti, is quite famous in the world of medicine. After obtaining a medical license in North Carolina, he and a friend started a business venture, which quickly grew into a major manufacturer of precision instruments and implant devices. That company is Columba and Cornix, a subsidiary of the Humani Corporation. So Professor Kerensky is Master Vahushti. He provided me with advice regarding Elena's transplant operation. That bastard! Excuse me. My name is Hans Nilsson, and I'd like to make a statement on behalf of Humani. Neither our company nor Columba and Cornix has supported the Syndicate in any way. In fact, it's quite the contrary. We, too, have become victims of their scheme. Please save the explanation for later. We need to evaluate our current situation. Now, we've learned that an individual named Cynthia Kazakov has ties to Vahushti. She worked here at Caduceus for a while. She was directly involved with the stigma research. And Mr. Marshall, according to a different report, Cynthia was a member of a secret research team for the U.S. Army and Humani. Is that correct? Yes, that's what I've been informed. How far has the military's research progressed? I cannot make any comments on that, except I've been informed that no research was conducted exploring military uses of stigma. Cynthia, how many people were you spying on? She had the trust of Kidman, Caduceus, and the U.S. Army. We should assume that most, if not all, of the research data is now in Parnassus's hands. And I'm told that their level of activity has increased as of late. Dr. Stiles of Caduceus, Japan, who was dispatched to Caucasus, will now give us the details. I'm sure you all know, but he's the doctor responsible for saving the world from guilt. Hello, everyone. I'd like to take a moment to update you on the current status of Caucasus. While I was there, I treated a number of patients who'd been infected with stigma. Similarly, the U.S. branch has dealt with a variety of cases as indicated in their report. But the true problem is this organization called Parnassus, mentioned earlier. The local police are investigating the matter, with the assistance of the Russian army. The United States will be providing support as well in order to crush Parnassus. We will be supplying both instruments and medicine, in addition to dispatching doctors from Caduceus. I believe that's a very wise decision. I've already volunteered you two. I hope you have no objections. I'll go and put an end to this. I'd like to know the truth. I was friends with Cynthia, after all. This is Angie Thompson. She assists me with my operations. She accompanied me to Caucasus and helped to analyze stigma at the scene. The research data provided by everyone was quite useful, but the stigma are showing signs of change. Unfortunately, they're not evolving to our advantage. Could you be more specific? They're beginning to multiply without the existence of calorium. And if they're doing that, then they're becoming much more infectious. So then, someone's still researching and refining them. The nature of these infectious strains of stigma changes as it spreads from host to host. However, there's a limit to the number of times a strain can undergo this change. They're planning to utilize this unique characteristic to their advantage by spreading stigma over a limited period of time and then allowing the pathogen to die out naturally. So they're trying to tame the devil, huh? What a dangerous plan. Its completion is drawing near. We don't have much time to lose. On orders from Caduceus, we'll be going to investigate where these weapons will be heading to. We'll leave Caucasus to you guys. Director Quattro has more detailed research data. It should aid you in your investigation of Caucasus. Thank you. That's very reassuring. These missions will be dangerous. But I know we'll all see each other again. There's so much I'd like to ask a master surgeon like yourself. But let's wait until this is all over. 
Yeah, when that time comes, we'll talk about the future of medicine. Dr. Vaughn, the police have stormed in. All right, Elena, head to the back. How can they use that old castle as their base? Have they no respect for history? Nobody would ever guess that a terrible disease lurks inside. I guess they were trying to impress their buyers. Well, if this really is their storehouse, then it should be filled with weapons. At any rate, storming this castle will be no easy task. We have an emergency. The enemies used a chemical weapon. A few officers have been hit. Do we know what type of substance it is? It appears to be a blister agent. We need to treat them immediately. Elena, clean the patients and bring them into the operation tent. Yes, Doctor. They even had chemical weapons? Doctor, we've received word that the analysis team is unable to determine what type of gas it is. They don't know what it is? Is it some new kind of agent? What should we do? We can't deal with an unknown chemical. Wait, the patient's symptoms include those from existing poisonous gases. It's like the effects of multiple types of poisonous gases are appearing at once. So it's a compound of known agents. We do have antidotes for each of the different conditions. Let's treat each condition as it arises. That's all we can do for now. But the antidotes are powerful medicines on their own. If we inject too much into the patient, it'll... Let's use a sedative along with it. If we sedate the affected area first, we can minimize the amount of antidote we use. But we won't be able to see where the affected areas are when they're sedated. Then it's up to us to remember it. Understood. I'll prep the antidotes. Please get ready, doctors. This will be risky, but we don't have any other choice. Beginning the operation. The antidote kit is ready. I've also injected a coloring agent into the patient as well. The affected areas should now have visibly different colors. Inject the antidotes into the areas with the same colors. Well, please open him up. Memorize the color and locations of the inflammations. Once you have them memorized, inject the sedative. The colors will disappear after you inject it. The inflammations have been sedated. Do you remember what the... Please continue using the antidotes on the inflammations with the same color as the medicine. The inflammations seem to have been reduced, but the numbers are still high. That means that more of them will appear soon. More inflammations are appearing! signs of inflammation they're still high there are more inflammations well, does it look like we'll see any more inflammations we can't let our guard down yet more have disappeared. His numbers are back to normal. We should be all right now. Let's start closing him up. Please close him up. Send the data from the operation to the analysis team. Understood. I think they'll be able to create a specific antidote using this data. I hope so. 
I never want to perform an operation like this again. Dr. Blaylock! The police have located Cynthia. So she is here. I don't know what happened to you, Cynthia. But there's no way I can forgive you for what you've done. I don't hear that many gunshots anymore. The operation must be drawing to a close. No new injuries have been reported either. It looks to me like we have the upper hand. Maybe so. But if we back them into a corner, who knows what they might do? Cynthia. Doctor, they've taken Cynthia into custody. They have? Where is she? I want to see her. I've been waiting to talk to you, Cynthia. I never would have imagined that you were a spy. You were a big help to us at Caduceus. Or so I thought. Did you do it for Ray? Or was it your own decision? You don't know anything about him, Val. Apparently not. But I'm not interested in the aspirations of an arms dealer. Calm down, Val. If you don't mind, Cynthia, will you tell us about him? He was born and raised here, in this miserable land torn apart by civil war. He went to Russia and then to the United States in order to become a doctor. He realized his dream and started a medical company. But when he returned to his homeland to offer his assistance, he found only betrayal. What happened? The army tried to assassinate him while he was working at a refugee camp. He had devoted his life to saving the country and that was how they repaid him. Goodwill was an unwanted guest. Unfortunately, that's a reality for countries in turmoil. He had always been an advocate of reconciliation, but from then on, his thoughts became more radical. There is a legend among these people. They believe that long ago, a great flood destroyed mankind, save one family that landed here. As a member of the Chosen People, he's allowed his pride to corrupt him. The forces of destruction are still weak, he said, and he began to yearn for greater power, regardless of whether it was good or evil. That's how he became involved with arms trade and stigma. Yes, he sold his soul to the devil, and he received stigma from Professor Wilkins, with whom he was acquainted. You worked so hard at Caduceus to save people's lives. Was that all a lie? I honestly don't know. Although, I can say that I don't think the same as he does. For a time I believed that I could change him. But his madness only grew stronger. After I left Caduceus, I came here to try and dissuade him from his plan. But shortly after I arrived, he put a shackle around my heart. What? See the scar on my chest, Val? <gasps> he implanted a pump unit designed to terminate my life. He has the ability to kill me by remote control whenever he wishes. And so, I am bound to this castle. But that's not what it's meant for. It's to save people like myself. This is horrible. If that's what's keeping you here, Cynthia, then let's remove it. I doubt that's possible, Val. We'll make it possible. But you have to trust us. There's still hope. What do you say? I'm sorry, Val. I'm sorry for everything. This is the implant he placed inside me. The image is a CAT scan that he took. And even further inside is the special chip he installed. It's pretty deep inside. Removing it won't be easy. Won't he find out what we're up to during the operation from your vital signs? What if he activates the chip while we're operating? That's not going to happen. He's at a college in Caucasus, in his own personal arc. He doesn't know anything about what's going on here. Even though he left you here? That's why he left me here. He has no interest in me anymore. 
Cynthia, I'm going to save you. I swear it. Thank you. You're the only one that never changes. Cynthia, I'll break these chains around your heart. Well, let's all do our best. We'll be operating on her heart, so please be very careful while performing this procedure. Where is the pump unit located? It's in the atrium. Let's take a look inside. Is this the same kind of implant I have? If that's true, then we can remove all the control chips to completely shut it off. First, let's burn the control... One of the control chips has stopped functioning. Use the scalpel to remove it. The chip has been cut off. It's hemorrhaging. Treat it with the antibiotic. That's the first... That time? An irregularity on the EKG. Doctor, please be careful. Her heart is fibrillating. Stop the treatment for a moment. She's undergoing cardiac arrest. Massage the heart to resuscitate her. We have a pulse. The implant has been separated. Let's remove it with the forceps. This is the chip that's keeping her here. The chip is implanted directly into the heart. Dear God, we should carefully peel this off little by little instead of ripping it off all at once. First, we need to disable the chip. Use the laser on the chip to burn it. The chip has been disabled. This is similar to the control chips. Begin the removal process with the scalpel. Another irregularity on the... Next. Now, make it... We can almost dock... What? This can't be. It's different than the control chips? The chip rebooted itself. We can't remove it like this. Disable it again. Thankfully, her heart didn't begin fibrillating. The chip's been disabled. The chip has been detached. An the extraction has been completed. That should do it. Don't start celebrating yet. We're only halfway done. We need to replace the pump implant that we removed earlier. I'll get the implant ready. Please keep an eye on the EKG and place it again. We've avoided the danger of cardiac arrest, but we still have to be careful. The pump has been placed inside the heart. Next, we'll attach the control chips. The first control chip is in. Another irregularity on the EKG. There are still wounds left. But the pump has begun functioning again. All right, let's close the atrium. Vitals are stable. Her heart is also remaining in stable condition. It seems like she'll be all right. Well then, let's start closing her up. Please close her up. Same tools, the same machine. It can be used for both good and evil. It all depends on the intent of the person who uses it. Great work, Doctor. It's over, Cynthia. We did it. I'm so glad we could save her. You know, that's been our goal all along. To save people's lives and rid the world of illness. You've already made up your mind, haven't you, Marcus? Yeah, let's end this once and for all. It's time to confront this Master Vahushti. All right, here goes. This is Vahushti's room? It's very quiet. Vahushti! Where are you? Who disturbs the serenity of my laboratory? 
I see you're different from those ill-mannered police. You are welcome here then. But how did you learn of this place? Do you remember me, Ray? It's me, Valerie Blaylock, Cynthia's friend. She's the one who told us where to find you. And yes, we removed your wicked device from her. I see. You're Cynthia's friend. That's all the more reason to welcome you. Do you remember Professor Wilkins Vahushti? I'm Marcus Vaughn, his associate. Does the name ring a bell? So, you're Dr. Vaughn. Welcome, Father of Stigma. It's an honor to meet you. Even if it was by mere chance, your discovery is of great significance. You've got it all wrong. I'm not its father. I came here to eradicate it. What an ignorant decision. Your sense of duty as a doctor has blinded you to the possibility of life. What is needed in this world, which long ago reached maturity and began to rot away, is stigma. The power to create new life. Rejoice that you are chosen to take part in this momentous occasion. I knew you weren't normal, but you've completely lost it. What happened to you, Ray? You were a good doctor before, but now you're just a ruthless murderer. Have you not yet tired of the meaningless praise you receive for saving people's lives? Open your eyes. The true nature of life is endless conflict. This is the path that mankind must walk. How can you not see it? It's over now. Your Parnassus is gone. My power remains undiminished because my body itself is the Ark. I am the vessel that holds the new form of life. You're infected with stigma? He's no longer capable of judging right from wrong. Infected? No. We are in symbiosis. Together with stigma, I will survive through the end of an age, as did my ancestors. Elena, get the anesthetic. Yes, Doctor. Marcus, don't tell me you plan to operate on him. I see edema on his body. The infection must be in the advanced stages. We can't allow this strain of stigma to leave here. We must confront it to learn the truth. I've contacted Caduceus. We've sent them the research data we found as well. I've taken a look through the data. This is one troublesome stigma. He's named it Cardia. Could it have been named that because that's where it attaches itself? It means heart. The heart? Since there are stigma that can cause secondary infections, we can't ignore any types of stigma. We can only predict what may be triggered by the death of its host. But we should prepare for the worst. I won't let that happen. We have to completely remove all traces of Cardia from the heart. Can all of you hear me? Director! Caduceus will do everything in its power to exterminate Cardia. No, all stigma, everywhere. I'm sending staff to prevent secondary casualties through infections to you immediately. Hi, Elena. We have a large number of skilled nurses ready to go, too. You don't have enough equipment there, right? We'll prepare some for you as well. All you need to do is concentrate on your operation, just like any other procedure. Dr. Everett, stop chit-chatting with them and prepare the equipment for transport. Everyone. How encouraging. Yes. We're not the only ones here fighting. Doctor, I'll do my best as well. Let's put an end to stigma. I don't regret the decisions I've made. I will eliminate stigma. Okay, let's begin the operation to remove the Cardia Stigma. 
What on earth is this? A membrane. It's completely covering the area. That thing on top must be the core. The core moves on its own, covered in an outer shell. In monitoring the operation at all, right now we have little information about the core itself. Please let me see what happens when the membrane covering the area has been removed. First, apply antibiotic gel to the membrane to soften it. After that, make an incision. A section of the membrane... There seems to be no problem with this method. Please continue extracting the membrane. Oh! It's possible... Huh? It disappeared? How did it get over there so fast? Good job! The membrane is being reduced. Extraction is proceeding smoothly. The membrane has been completely extracted. The membrane is regenerated. These numbers, they're good. The core seems to be under a great deal of stress. Please continue the membrane extraction procedure. appears to return to normal if left alone. Remove it quickly after applying the gel. The membrane has been completely removed. Again? Came off. The core is out in the open now. It's an old method, but incinerating it with the laser is our best option. We'll finish it with this. Cardia discharged something. Use the forceps to remove it. It's it's working. Keep it up. Watch its movements. Please, hurry the future your oscillations. Cardi is making some kind of amazing. Just a little more, Doctor. Yeah. <laughs> 
Is it over? Is it really? Yeah. Doctor. You rid my body of the last stigma. Yes. Consider it your atonement. I don't know if I'll ever be able to atone for what I've done. Marcus, he seems different than before. Stigma is an antagonist for malignant diencephalic sclerosis. It has protected my brain until now. Without it, I won't survive for long. You use stigma to treat a diencephalic disorder? Wait, but then the change in his behavior, could it have been induced? Could he be suffering from delirium as a side effect? It's getting hard to breathe. I let my anger take control of me. I was weak, and I, I lost myself. My regret is too much to bear. I'm sure you saved countless lives over the years. But that doesn't give you the right to take away even a single life. Dr. Vaughn. Dr. Blaylock. Thank you. You saved me. I was able to repent before my death. He's gone. Doctor. It's finally over. The threat of stigma, which brought fear to the entire world, was eliminated with the dismantling of the criminal organization Parnassus. Caduceus's international network was integral to the operation, providing treatment and taking preventative measures in a number of countries. Because of their efforts, the disease was successfully contained, and the crisis caused by man's divisiveness was brought to an end through cooperation. How can you decline? It's an invitation from the President himself. He wants to recognize you all for your efforts in fighting stigma. I tried to persuade them, but their answer was still no. I'll prepare an official statement if you like. I just don't understand. It's such an honor. They've gone through some painful experiences. An occasion such as this would only reopen the wounds. What they need right now is to be with the patients they've treated. To see their smiling faces. Our top priority is the analysis of Ahushti's data on stigma. I have to admit, though, I'm not exactly looking forward to it. However, it's of tremendous importance to pathology and pharmacology. True. But it's hard not to think about Cynthia at a time like this. It would be the perfect opportunity for her to undo some of the damage she's done. I like to believe that while she was here, she focused on helping people. I just can't bring myself to think otherwise. Well, our purpose here at Caduceus is to save lives. I'm sure that's where her heart was while she was with us. Dr. Everett, why don't we call it a day and get some dinner? You too, Robert, if you have the time. Well, this is a rare occasion. Sure, why not? All right, Elena, see you tomorrow. Bye, Leslie. Looks like that's it for today. The director assigned us so many patients, we didn't even have time for a break. Are you ready to head out, Marcus? Not quite. I need to finish this up first. By the way, Val, I'll be out the day after tomorrow. I'm going to see Professor Wilkins. Is it about restoring his memory? Mind if I tag along? No, not at all. Then I'll inform the director. You weren't planning on leaving me behind, were you? 
I am a member of the Special Disease Counteraction Team. Elena. All right, you two. Let's go get some fresh air. You know, looking at the city like this, it almost seems like nothing ever happened. Do you have any regrets, Elena? You know, if you hadn't followed me to Alaska, you wouldn't have had to go through the whole ordeal. I don't have a single regret, Dr. Vaughn. All those sparkling lights, each one is a patient. And they're counting on us to take good care of them. Stigma is gone, but who knows what's in store for us next. I'll never quit being a doctor, Marcus, no matter what happens. No matter how hard it may seem at times, or how much danger I have to face. For the sake of those patients that only I can help. I feel the same way. I'll be counting on you. And I'll be counting on you. Dr. Vaughn, Dr. Blaylock. Dr. Stiles, what's up? I have something that I'd like the two of you to assist me with. Is this data for VR simulations? Our disease researcher became very enthusiastic when he saw the records of your stigma operations. He's apparently made simulation data out of them. Someone's already created VR sims from our operations. We only have data for care and Soma, though. Still, that's amazing. Stigma is spreading throughout the world already. If it's possible to simulate operating on it, we'll be able to train a large number of doctors. And they won't have to be completely uninformed about it either. Since you're the leading surgeons against stigma, we'd like the two of you to try out these simulations. If that's the case, I'd be glad to help you. Thank you. All right then. Please try these consecutive operations designed by our Director of Disease Research. There's a little something hidden inside it. 
A little something? This simulation has the VR data of Karen Soma in it. But there's VR data from some different pathogens recorded in it as well. Different pathogens? Yes, I don't believe that you two would have ever seen them before. Dr. Stiles and I will help you through them, so relax. I understand. Let's start the simulation. Well then, let's begin the operation. Good luck. Begin by treating the wounds. The wounds have been treated. Is that onyx? No. It is. There's something here. It's fast. Oh, is this guilt? Huh? Is this that surprise pathogen? A highly infectious pathogen used for medical terrorism more than 10 years ago. This thing's name is Kiriaki. It's one operation that we'll never be able to forget. Dr. Stiles, you were at the front line of the war on guilt, correct? It was over a decade ago, but I still remember it clearly. The treatment method used to incinerate it with the laser is no different than against stigma. You must adapt to its movements and fix the laser... That's the first one. Amazing as I expected. It's appeared again. Please look around for it. Kiriaki has disappeared. The final Kiriaki has appeared. Its attacks are fierce, so be careful. has gone into hiding. Find the ultrasound. sound. The Kiriaki has been defeated. Amazing indeed. Well, let's close the patient up. Move on to the next stage of the simulation. Beginning the second simulated operation. Burn these tumors with the laser. Incoming guilt. This one's guilt as well. This one's name is Diftera. Guide the pair of tumors together, then drain them when they merge together temporarily. Don't forget to treat the smaller tumors they create as well. It seems that now's the time to drain it. Good, you're on a roll. perfectly calm even during its sudden final assault. Oh, amazing. When there are two pairs, be careful not to let the same colors collide with each other. Now, 
let's continue on to the next patient. Beginning the third simulation. Deftera and Soma? You put guilt and stigma together in one operation? This was only supposed to be a demo program. That guy will never change. But always be ready for a surprise when you're operating. Please treat them at the same time. Beginning the fourth patient simulation. This is the last one. First, let's treat the wounds. And these wounds. again. The Kiriaki has appeared again.
Fire seems to have combined. The final Kiriaki has appeared. Savara, you put these in here too? If you don't burn them with I'll the stop. laser, it's going to be very problematic. Operation. Your skills are amazing, as I would expect from the ace surgeon from Caduceus, USA. The data from the simulation is satisfactory as well. We'll be able to report on its effectiveness. Wow, the legendary doctor praised us. It's kind of embarrassing.